Welcome back to our channel. Please be reminded that this video does not reflect on any opinions from the DC team and is only published for information purposes. Video courtesy of Learning Events Series Facebook page. Please check our video description for link. An online lecture and open forum was given by City Mayor Felipe Antonio Birimolio regarding the Dumaguete Smart City Reclamation Project last August 9, 2021, via Zoom and Facebook. Hello, good evening. Good evening to everyone who has joined us for tonight's learning event series 7.0. Uh, tonight, we have a very special guest, and the title for the series tonight is Ask the Mayor. And so before we begin, I'd just like to remind everyone, I'm sure you saw the house rules, but in addition to this, uh, we would like to inform everyone that we will be prioritizing the questions sent via Zoom due to the volume of questions that we've already received. And so uh, there is a question and answer box here on Zoom. You can type in your questions at any point of the mayor's talk and even as uh, the open forum is um, going on and we'll try to sift through them and ask them. But if the question has been answered by the talk or by another similar question, then we hope you would understand if um, we would leave that be. So uh, just remember, we will be taking questions from both Facebook Live and Zoom, but we will be prioritizing the questions sent through Zoom. All right. So Tonight's learning event series is brought to you by Dumaguete City Host Lions Club and the Rotary Club of Dumaguete South. Thank you. This is the seventh in a series of learning events. And tonight, we are going to welcome Honorable Felipe Ipe Antonio B. Remolio. He is the current mayor of Dumaguete City he attended Silliman University and finished with a degree in political science. He then studied in Ateneo de Manila University and received his law degree. In 1998, he came back to Dumaguete and was elected mayor. And in 2016, he was elected mayor once again of Dumaguete City and is the sitting incumbent. Good evening, sir. Good evening, my name is uh, Attorney Zara, and uh, good evening, uh, uh, esteemed members of the Lions Club and Rotary Club. And my name is Usab, sa mga uh, kauban na itong mga taga Dumaguete, and perhaps uh, na taga Negros Oriental, and maybe uh, any part of the world, please, already in Zoom. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Mayor, mulagi, uh, any part of the world, kay tungod aning online platform na to karon. So we're grateful for this. And uh, we have 30 minutes for you this evening. Uh, we would like to listen to your perspectives, your views on this issue. And we hope to learn from you tonight. Please go ahead. Yes. Um, unfortunately, 30 minutes will not be enough. But anyway, uh, with the, so many questions, I'll try as much as possible to be uh, uh, to uh, cover the salient features. No, in uh, you see uh, the most controversial uh, project now that uh, has hit the the uh, internet, the uh, radio, television here and abroad uh, is our proposed uh, uh, smart city project no, of Dumaguete City. Um, you see, a number of uh, our major infrastructure projects of Dumaguete uh, are now on the finishing stage, like our two bridges. It's already possible. Our 
MRF and uh, materials recovery facility, the city's uh, uh, pyrolysis uh, machine would be um, operational hopefully this month. We have already closed our open dump site. We have uh, started the uh, uh, concreting of uh, our future satellite market in Baumpandan. We have uh, already uh, uh, com almost completed our uh, tech tech voc technological uh, vocational school in uh, in uh, Batingil and another one to be built. We have uh, our satellite or uh, uh, satellite uh, clinic or hospital in Talai, and uh, almost fin uh, to be finished is our uh, evacuation center and uh, uh, many other projects that, uh, of course, including the Pantawan 3, uh, which is uh, now on its uh, finishing stage. Our our multi-purpose uh, sports facility and uh, and uh, park, which is now uh, that's right in front of uh, of uh, Bethel and this uh, Balayna Dako. Anyway, you, you can see on screen is our proposed uh, smart city project. My smart city uh, is actually a uh, it's uh, the, the aim of the smart city is actually to uh, harness, uh, optimize the use of information technology to build a uh, livable city, which is environmentally sound. You know? The major features are first, the creation or the co construction of two uh, wastewater treatment facilities, one in Tinago area uh, to the south and one in the uh, Blook area to the north. You see, uh, uh, this was uh, envisioned because uh, of a um, the discovery in 2019 that uh, when uh, it was the time when uh, uh, Boracay was uh, uh, taken over by the DNR because of the presence of E. coli, including the Manila Manila Bay, and I right away I had the uh, the uh, uh, waters along the boulevard in, in Tinago area uh, analyzed. And the analysis was um, the presence, there was a presence of a, a fecal coliform, which is about uh, 1, more than 1,600 in uh, uh, MPN or most probable number per 100 milliliter of seawater. And uh, so it makes our boulevard non-swimmable, it's very dangerous. So uh, that was uh, uh, an attempt, an aspiration to, to uh, finally uh, solve this, uh, this, uh, to this problem and make our whole boulevard swimmable and uh, enjoyable. Part, another feature of our smart city is the uh, creation of uh, 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 open spaces, parks, uh, jogging spaces, promenades, and the and the use of uh, um, green buildings and renewable energy, and uh, um, and, and and many other facilities in that area, in that uh, proposed uh, uh, um, smart city project. The 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 apart from uh, from the fact that we want to uh, create a, uh, a, a livable space for the city of Dumaguete, the, it, it would really be a means of generating the much needed jobs that uh, our people need for the city of Dumaguete and generate uh, more income for the city so that the city in turn can, uh, can afford to, uh, to uh, uh, build, hospitals for free to all its residents uh, to improve the, uh, and even to the extent of uh, giving subsidy to, to, uh, to, uh, to, all, to all residents, no? Subsidy in terms of uh, uh, utilities, food, including the building of homes for, for the homeless. 
and uh, and many other uh, social economic uh, benefits that our poor people would uh, both poor and rich could uh, avail of. Now, um, I, I, I admittedly um, uh, uh, the, the the our setback now is the fact that before the the citizenry or the the population of our city and our province uh, have, would have seen this uh, this, uh, this 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 uh, project or or uh, the way you're uh, listening to now we the 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 internet the what you call this facebook people have already interpreted and went out of their you know imagination and uh, made false assumptions and uh, conclusions to this project which is still on its proposal stage first of all um, there is no uh, there is no uh, detailed engineering plan yet the the what you see is just a conceptual framework of uh, the project along the boulevard uh, it's a, it's an elongated form no uh, the the boulevard area uh, is will be unobstructed up to the pier and so as the siliman beach area will be unobstructed you can see that uh, there is a gap between the um, present coastline and uh, and the what you call islets actually there uh, they they say there are two islets there or islands but actually there are one two three four five six seven because uh, there are gaps in uh, in between the the first the southern and the northern uh, islands no uh, obviously for for what the reason no? the, there are waterways that would uh, uh, divide these islands to enable um, the uh, bankas, uh, motorized uh, pump boats, no, to, to pass through these waterways, to to have access to the uh, to uh, the, uh, the fishing fishing grounds. No, first of all, um, the the uh, estimated uh, uh, distance between the the present coastline and the islets would be about 30 meters and uh, this can be used this will be navigable this can be used for even for uh, fundry or, or revenue raising activities like uh, first sports and revenue raising activities like what we see in uh, venice that uh, people or uh, tourists can uh, ride the uh, uh, know boats or uh, bankas that will uh, 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 bring them from the north to south or south to north. So, and uh, the distance between the, uh, I mean, from the shoreline, present shoreline to the uh, outermost uh, part of the island is would no would be no more than 250 meters, simply because after the 250 meter uh, distance. That will be a precipice already, and which is not uh, uh, advisable to to uh, to reclaim. Besides, uh, this beyond 250 meters would be the pathway or the route of the boats uh, flying uh, uh, from the from the pier to the south, or from the south to the pier. Okay, so these are the inherent limitations of our uh, of our project, uh, you can see that it's all the 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 plan is an elongated uh, uh, design. There will be two fishing best, uh, fishing fish ports uh, in this area, and we believe that uh, uh, through this uh, there will be uh, the we can revive our fishing uh, area. We will. Uh, a cure or we will solve the uh, the problem of uh, uh, of the dirty waters uh, sea water in Dumag surrounding uh, along the coastline of Dumaguete and uh, um, <clears throat> first of all I'd, I'd like to uh, I'd like to address the concerns of uh, possible damage or injury to sea life no? or uh, the the ecology underwater 
uh, as we speak now, I received a letter. Uh, and then, by the way, in order to uh, to uh, to intelligibly uh, find out where this uh, sea or marine uh, life is, specifically the corals and the mangroves, we really have to know where uh, we ha really have to uh, to uh, to conduct a marine survey or a marine inventory of all this. No? Uh, as we speak, uh, the, there, there's already a, uh, a preparation for a marine survey from uh, repeatable, uh, uh, from a repeatable firm uh, based in Cebu with uh, also with divers from UP and Siliman and uh, including uh, a marine biologist that will really uh, uh, go through this uh, to make a survey of our marine life in uh, the coastline of Tumaguete. And uh, it, has, it was my uh, in specific instructions that uh, to mitigate or to lessen or even to ob obviate, no? to prevent any damage to the marine life of Tumaguete, uh, I use the, uh, the acronym AIR or AIR. First, uh, avoid whatever uh, whatever uh, sea life uh, yeah, uh, under under uh, uh, underwater, no? which is underwater. Uh, number two, integrate into the design if uh, this sea life is um, is massive. And uh, I wouldn't even go to to the third, which is replace with the same quantity of. Uh, of, uh, of uh, sea creatures or sea life. The replace um, uh, approach was used in 1995 uh, when uh, the DNR approved the, the uh, reclamation of the SRP or the uh, South Reclamation Project in Cebu, which is about 330 hectares. No? Uh, it was uh, approved in June 15, 1995. Uh, I'd like to focus on uh, paragraphs 14, 15, and 16. Uh, in short, the, an ECC or Environmental Compliance Certificate was issued. Uh, and and uh, I'd like you to focus on paragraph 14, uh, which says that uh, the quantity of coral reefs, mangrove species, and trees to be affected by the dredging excavation Okay, shall be replaced, replaced with the same quantity of artificial reefs and equivalent mangroves, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? Perhaps at the time, uh, in 1995, uh, science was not yet at an advanced stage, but now with, with uh, the new technology available, we can actually uh, integrate sea life uh, or the creatures um, underwater by uh, making art, by making a, an aquarium, no, an aquarium which can also be, a, uh, which can be a tourist attraction, without touching uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the 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 area where this uh, uh, sea life or uh, plants are or the corals are. So, um, uh, in, in modern uh, technology. Uh, the use of uh, te technology to transfer corals to a different uh, place is already being uh, uh, being used by uh, by countries like Jamaica. We can also restore and propagate corals if they are, if these corals are really affected. No, but to do this, uh, we have to uh, really examine and study the actual location of this coral so that we can intelligibly uh, uh, integrate them or transfer them as the case may be. So the, 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 the approach here is that once we know the actual topography of the marine life, we will now uh, dictate to the proponent uh, to, to design the, uh, the, uh, the project Oh, the whole project, such that uh, we can avoid 
any destruction of sea life, or at the very least mitigate uh, this sea life. Let's go back to uh, paragraph 15 of the ECC, Environmental Compliance Certificate, which says that it's important that uh, a, an environmental fund uh, shall be uh, established to compensate whatever damage to the environment. Number 16, a multipartite monitoring team, uh, which we will need everyone's uh, help and support. No? Those advocates of the environment uh, for the preservation and protection of the environment are needed to consistently or regularly monitor the implementation of this. It is true that uh, each uh, area is diff uh, has, has its differences, no? uh, meaning uh, the, the 330 hectares of, in, in Cebu may be different in, uh, uh, yeah, compared to our coastline. But we have to know what, how different they are, other than the size, which is the Cebu reclamation is um, twice uh, larger than the Dumage, proposed Dumaguete project. In Manila, by the way, uh, the Philippine Reclamation Authority already approved about 1,700 hectares of uh, reclamation, creating also smart cities. Okay, uh, five projects uh, uh, from, uh, from uh, ranging from uh, uh, Pasay City to as far as Navotas. And these are have the already the imprimatur of the Philippine Reclamation Authority, but they, they also have to go through uh, a process with the DNR, uh, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. The process is so tedious and very, um, uh, very strict. You see, because um, it will probably take two to three years for these projects to be uh, for any, any application for a reclamation. Uh, can be processed and finally approved. As of the moment, okay, uh, we have not yet uh, commenced uh, applying uh, with the Philippine Reclamation Authority, and I have withheld signing of any contract or any uh, agreement until after I have uh, I have uh, made sure that uh, those misconceptions, exaggerations. Uh, 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 fake news would have been addressed. Uh, it's unfortunately, as I said, naunahan nata sa mga mga opposition before they have seen the pro the, the the concept of the project. What I'm saying, but my bottom line here is, if if is it not possible that we can uh, create a reasonable balance between. Uh, economic growth and helping the, the economy grow and the preservation and the uh, protection of the environment. Okay, possibly ba nga they can coexist or uh, it's already a, it cannot be a black or white or yes or no. Uh, put it in uh, the present perspective, uh, simplifying it is the, is the handling of the pandemic. No? Uh, it's easy to say uh, in the, the government, the executive department uh, has data and knows information that may not be available to the public, okay, or may not be known to the public. First of all, there, there's, a, as I said, there's a, 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 a how to handle the pandemic. If the Department of Health or our city health office uh, is to be followed strictly, we will have to do the lockdown because COVID, there are still active COVID cases in our city. But on the, on the other hand, uh, on the business side and the employment side, there is a, uh, we also are listening to the need to, to, uh, to help business because the business also help uh, uh, in the employment of our people. So, atoningi balance, sigi. So, we have to make uh, uh, arrangements or reasonable. Uh, uh, protocols so that the preservation of, of, of uh, and protection of life because of the pandemic and the uh, the uh, the the employment of our people in the economy to grow and that 
I mean, uh, everybody's affected by this. Uh, more so in the, our situation now, um, uh, the, 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 uh, the pursuit of this smart city project is very uh, timely and very, very much needed in a sense that uh, we don't have to burden the, we don't have to loan, we don't have to burden the national government for help. Uh, we have already found a, uh, a, a PPP uh, uh, proponent, all right, and uh, that is willing to invest this sum of money in the city of Dumaguete to provide jobs and uh, for a sustainable economic growth of our city. There are suggestions that uh, couldn't we make this project in inland Dumaguete? I say that Dumaguete, by the way, is the smallest LGU in the whole province. Okay, I, I, um, you cannot longer find a, a property which is uh, a, uh, a contiguous property which will be more than 20 hectares. And if you do this, uh, if you have, if you land bank uh, at least 100 hectares of uh, dry land, you will be already affecting the, uh, the agricultural lands in Dumaguete and the residential lands. And uh, in the reality, just the, in just the construction of the, uh, of the diversion road, which is about to be finished, it took us six years to finally settle with a property owner uh, of 100, hect 100 uh, uh, square meter property. Okay, inanakalisod ang pag, uh, pag uh, negotiate or even expropriate uh, a piece of land in Dumaguete. Or so, with, if you have to uh, affect or destroy uh, uh, or demolish uh, houses or even uh, fences. So, lisod ka ayo. No? And uh, we hope that uh, uh, the people are, will be open minded. Okay, uh, to this pursuit, I, 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 it's my belief that uh, only after we have uh, actually uh, examined the topography of the uh, the marine life of Dumaguete and suggest uh, mitigating measures that we can actually say that it this is doable or not doable. This is harmful in general or this is this can be mitigated. So uh, there is nothing to worry at this point in time because the, we have to go. We have to go through the process, and the process is, you know, it's very transparent. Once we have the uh, the uh, the inventory of this sea life or the ecosystem of Dumaguete, the shores of Dumaguete, then we will bring it up to uh, to the public for for another public round of public discussion. So we are open to that and even invite uh, all the uh, stakeholders to observe uh, how this uh, uh, inventory uh, of uh, the, the marine life of Dumaguete will be conducted. Okay? So this we need not resort to uh, below the belt uh, accusations. Okay? Uh, we can we can discourse, we can discuss openly, intelligibly, as a city of uh, a university town and a city of gentle people. Uh, so there is nothing to uh, there is nothing to be uh, so uh, um, what you call this very uh, to be angry about to be so so be so. Uh, but I, I like the passion. Okay, I like the passion of the people. Uh, uh, I would assume that you're doing this for, for, uh, for uh, uh, in good faith, and um, uh, we will need very much your passion, your advocacy, to help build a a, a smart city which is uh, environmentally uh, safe and attuned. No? Let's help each other. Uh, we welcome all suggestions, but. Uh, uh, we want uh, the people, the intelligent people of Dumaguete, uh, decide uh, uh, when we have all this data, we have all this data so that you can 
beside intelligibly. Rest assured, rest assured, okay, that all the people, especially those who will be benefited from this, the poor people of Dumaguete should, we have been in the, going the rounds uh, of uh, uh, enlightening the people, those who are the stakeholders, the beneficiaries of this, okay, whether rich or poor, because even the business sector, I believe, will be uh, the first to be, uh, well, no? it will be benefited in this project. It will also spur business, okay? Uh, this is a doctrine of self-help, no? We don't have to burden, again, the national government because uh, too much reliance on the era uh, is affecting a lot of uh, LGUs. Uh, the hardest part is to find a dedicated, uh, rather a, a willing investor to invest this, this uh, in Dumaguete City. And the hardest part we already have uh, solved. Now it is just the, the, now we have realized that the hardest part now will be the convincing majority of our people to, to adopt this for the, not just for, for the next five or 10 years, but the future generation. Because uh, judging from the Cebu experience and other uh, smart city projects or some reclamation projects, it would probably take another 10, uh, at the very least 15 years to, to, see the, to see the outcome, to see the, uh, the, the blossoming, the realization of, uh, of the investment no? uh, in, in this project. Okay, uh, remember the ECC in Cebu South Reclamation was issued in 1995. Maybe um, we probably 10 years back, no? uh, we are now 2021 in 2011. That was the only time that we realized that uh, the, the, the development, the progress, of the Cebu South Reclamation. So uh, uh, again, in closing, um, thank you very much for this opportunity. And uh, I wish, I, I welcome all, all questions. Uh, trust in the, your government, uh, trust in your government processes and agencies like the PRA or the Philippine Reclamation Authority and the DNR. If, uh, if this project, uh, uh, will not pass the strict scrutiny of these agencies, I, I would accept the fate because, uh, but we, are, we will have to do our best to, so that it will not be said that uh, in the remaining 11 months of my second term, I have done, uh, I have done, I have, I have just sat down idly because kitong ato mga projects na mention ako, they are now ready for inauguration. So the people cannot blame me, the future generation uh, cannot blame me that I did not try. I'll try my best to, uh, to do this, uh, but I would be willing to uh, accept the fate of this project uh, uh, going through the strict scrutiny of the DNR and the public uh, Philippine Reclamation Authority. Mayong gabi, udagang salamat. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Mayor. Uh, we have a lot of reactions. We've received a lot of reactions uh, that we will be starting with. But, um, Mayor, I just have to tell you, thank you for sharing your projects that uh, it's wrapping up. It's come to fruition. Also, it's such a welcome opportunity to have you join this learning event series to present your position. And hopefully tonight, you can also directly answer the questions about the project. Um, but uh, before we proceed to the open forum, as the issue has been the subject of many discussions and there are already a lot of questions, uh, in order to maintain order and clarity during the open forum and ensure uh, that the discussion remains within topic, I will be asking questions one at a time because I will also be sifting through them as I ask them. Um, after which you pause to consider your answer before actually giving your answer to the relevant question. Uh, we aim to get some clarity 
on a lot of these questions by directly addressing uh, as many as we can tonight within the given time frame. So I hope you understand if we have a lengthy discussion and the point has already been exhausted, I will need to request that we wrap up and move on to the next question para we can cover a lot of ground tonight. All right, so uh, with that being said, uh, let's begin. Uh, are you ready to start taking questions, Mr. Mayor? Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, All right. I'm Okay, uh, well, since you mentioned or you started the, uh, you ended or with uh, finding a willing investor, we have some questions uh, surrounding um, EMware. And we would like to ask Mr. Mayor, how did EMware uh, come to know about Dumaguete and who are their contacts here? How did they come to know that uh, this would be a place where a viable smart city can be erected? Okay. Um, this is a PPP contract, no? Uh, PPP, uh, yes. It's PPP, uh, public-private uh, partnership uh, mode of uh, doing a project, okay? Uh, as to the specifics, uh, first of all, I before this uh, uh, EM Cuerpo company uh, um, uh, proposed in for the admitted and unsolicited proposal in November 25, uh, none of the Dumaguetenos that I know from the city hall know of this company. All right. So specifically. Um, they, I mean, to, to put it uh, plainly, they have no, I don't know of any contacts of these people, of this company, uh, before the, uh, the company um, uh, filed a, an unsolicited proposal in November of 20, 2019. 2019. So, so EM Cuerpo had no idea about Dumaguete and did not no. do their own due diligence prior I, to I not, giving the that proposal? Is not, that is not what I'm saying. I cannot uh, make a second guess of how the, uh, the, how the, uh, uh, they came up with this proposal. Uh, I could just surmise that they have, they have been to Dumaguete, they have seen the place, and it is a viable project and uh, otherwise, they wouldn't have proposed make this unsolicited proposal. Uh, EM Cuerpo, by the way, uh, I understand uh, based on their uh, uh, projects, no? um, there is, is a, also an expert in uh, their big projects on uh, wastewater treatment facility. Uh, that's what I that's what I know. Uh, and uh, projects build uh, like uh, bridges, um, uh, shoreline protection projects, hospitals, right. and many okay, others. But uh, they have not any experience in island building or reclamation projects. Is that correct? Well, if uh, you, they have experience. Well, if you, 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 uh, you, uh, what is so, an isle? What, what did they reclaim? Po? Baka, okay. ano, our uh, audience can check. If you are basing it with, uh, with their uh, authority to or their on the uh, pickup uh, license, they can do, they're authorized to do offshore engineering or reclamation projects, off, offshore reclamation projects. But have they actually to, done any? Yes, yes, ma'am. Ah, okay. And, uh, what, what, and, uh, what, what, and, what is the project uh, that you can um, give as an example, Mayor? I'm sure the audience would like to know because I think what uh, what uh, the audience knows is that uh, they are inexperienced in this field. So maybe you can give some examples of uh, projects, see, reclamation projects. You see, uh, I you see the project that I'm saying is that uh, it, it's there, no? Um, the I think the the 
it's an offshore engineering. That's uh, offshore engineering. That's one, two, three, four, five. No, they have uh, projects, uh, not bigger projects like this project. That's uh, the, this twenty-three billion uh, reclamation project. By the way, this um, this smart city project is a bundled project, meaning reclamation is just part of the uh, of the correct. bundled but project. It, it huh? is what kicks off the project, correct? Because yes, uh, yes, it, it yes. will it's have to build project, off yes. an yes, island. Right. And then yes, from there, right. once that's yeah. all stable, then that's when all the other components of the smart city um, begin to be built. Precisely. Yes. Uh, so I think... Yeah, but, yeah but I think Mr. Too. Mayor, uh, for this for this part of the question lang, no, I, I might yeah. have to proceed na lang kasi yeah. okay. uh, the question lang that? is if they have any projects that they've already um, engaged in where we can say, okay, EM Cuerpo uh, was the contractor for this particular okay. reclamation project. You see, um, uh, uh, as uh, a some contract agreement with a, a Chinese company, state-owned, which is Poli Changda. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The one thing uh, good here is that they have uh, subcontracted a this uh, this sub this uh, reclamation works um, as a uh, for because this China company is an expert in this field. So the selection committee, okay, because I was not part of the, of the, uh, I'm not part of the selection committee, already passed through this, um, of, uh, through, through all the qualifications. No? So like uh, big companies like Schumart, San Miguel companies are now doing reclamation projects. They partner with, with uh, big foreign companies to do this for, for to subcontract certain uh, expertise. Uh, so, in other words, I, I, I would like to say that ang expertise ng uh, 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 EM Cuerpo per se is not on reclamation per se. Okay? So, that is what... Uh, that is what I can uh, say, but it does, not prevent, that def, it does not prevent them from yeah. from uh, doing uh, from subcontracting the I reclamation part of the project. Uh, the expertise side of it comes from their partner, the subcontractor, right. China yes. Yes. China's Poli Changda, correct? Correct. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So um, we can move on to some pre preliminaries, Mr. Mayor, because. There were some other questions that were raised. For example, there was a statement made, and I think this is something that we can clarify, no? uh, and I hope that you don't mind because this is a, an old, uh, I think half a month ago. Uh, I think you made the statement that said there were no corals uh, uh, on the coastline of Dumaguete, and uh, apparently there were um, amateur uh, videographers that went and dived and uh, produced some videos okay. of this. Would you like to clarify what you meant when you said there were uh, no corals? First of all, may I ask the the proponent of that question, the one who propounded that question, if she or he has heard my my uh, my interview with uh, Karen Davila, what actually I what I actually said was that I alerted Karen Davila. Uh, I told her that Please check on your people there, because I doubt if the the one that they uh, shown on video is a faithful uh, is a faithful video or uh, yes of uh, the coastal or the coral coral life in Dubaguete City. And I even told Bakasa Kwanyan, Bakasa Apo Island, and it also Kwan, yes. And uh, Karen Davila said. Uh, when it was already quite over, and he said, "I better check with that uh, with staff mayor." All so, right. So here you're saying that you did not say wala. You're saying you did not say walay corals. Wala. Sa atubangan sa dumagete. Okay. 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 
Maunungkot ng panguta na dirigi, panguta na nga. Ningutunong kang walay orals. So a lot of people went out and actually shot videos of the marine life in Pia Pipi. It was a result of, again, I think, misinterpretation. But I actually said, you better check because I don't believe that is a moral decision. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. That's what I said. The only time, the only time we will know the actual uh, coral situation in Dumaguete or the sea life in Dumaguete is to conduct a marine survey, which we, which the the proponent will now will be doing. Uh, okay. Okay. In the next three weeks. Okay. All right. That's good, Mayor. Na imong naklaro na kay you 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 said earlier, no. And I would like to ano to hark back to what you said earlier. Na in spite of the rockers that we have now, I think you mentioned that it's good. You assume that people are participating and engaging in good faith. So I think what we what we want to do this evening is actually to clarify, you know, clarify the issues. Let's let's see what's what's true, what's not. And so hopefully uh, we can do that by answering the questions. And I would also like to say na lang na let's try to counter, uh, let's not mention na lang the fake news because we really don't know. Some people are in good faith saying that they have heard that it has been said. So now that you said na wala, then it's good. That, uh -oh. How can I say that? That'll be irresponsible if I say that. Okay. No are corals in Dumaguete. It is like wala yung isda sa Dumaguete. Sige. Next question, Mayor. These are just the preliminary stuff. Paan ka na yung... Another statement that they wanted to have clarified is that you mentioned that there are 70% poor Uh, ano constituents here sa Dumaguete. So, um, ganahan nga ipaklarify ni nga statement because apparently there is 2015 data from the Philippine Statistics Authority that show only about 12% poverty incident. So, uh, well, would you like to uh, ano, yes, yes, clarify? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. These are not based on the uh, Philippine Statistics uh, I am tell I am my my statement when they said about seventy percent are poor. I would be including I in a I I would be including all those unemployed and all those even those employed in city hall. They cannot afford to uh, at times when uh, sickness or struck strike them, they cannot uh, they they go on the seek uh, financial aid to city. Uh, I. By poor, by 70%, I include all those underemployed, and especially in the times of pandemic, because it is my experience that every day people go to me, people go to the officials, barangay officials, to to uh, to seek help and beg for uh, uh, assistance and medicine, hospitalization, food, uh, electric and water bills. It is our daily experience. That's what I said. Okay. And if you tell the, anyone in Dumaguete, even the pedicab drivers, the, those who are self-employed, I consider them poor. And now, because of the pandemic, even those who are, oh, have we, who you think will not be affected, those who have businesses here, are also affected. So that is what I mean by poor. It's not the mm. statistics that uh, that you are saying now, because uh, in other words, galisod ang mga tao. At least seventy percent of those I know, galisod yun. That is what I mean. Poor, Daga, okay, homeless. There's a survey in uh, 2018 that we are have tatung tanang barangays, mo about over ten thousand uh, homeless in. In Dumaguete City, it times five, no, times five, na ni mga homeless. That will be fifty thousand people who are homeless. That will be included in the term of poor. So, cinquenta mil, hundred thirty-five nata. Don't be, don't be, 
Uh, I think uh, ano, I think, yeah, the, I think the numbers matter, man. Good. I think that's yeah. why there was a need for clarification, no? Kung yeah, unsay okay. the yeah. number, because uh, if we look at the data, uh, I think the data will show a different number. And so it's nice yeah. that you clarified that uh, yeah. this this seventy percent estimate is based on your own estimates, yes. uh, anic- anecdotal evidence, no? Imuhang okay. kaugalingong experience. Uh, although kung ganahan mo check ang mga tao ani uh, dili siya mo tugma sa data nga naa ka 2015 so i think that's another bone of contention no the data is Uh-oh. only data and what what year was that taken dili sa pero kung ano good year, year. Uh, yeah. there's a there's just an uh, opposing view siguro no regarding okay. data because yeah. as there's a comment here that said that it's important to be factual and not anecdotal so i think yeah, at I, least I agree. I, we've I clarified agree that, that is that is my definition of uh, uh, yeah okay i think we've clarified that yeah. um we can proceed uh, to the next questions i think uh one last preliminary um what exactly does the 23 billion cover uh, because I think, uh, you know, in, in the MoMA, it does not mention that the facilities and the other bundled um, amenities of this smart city will be covered by the 23 billion. So maybe you'd like to clarify? All right. Uh, I'll, I'll show you the MOU. It's not MoMA. Okay. I don't know what the basis. It's there. It's all there. Uh, the 23 million billion is not just yes. the reclamation portion. It's all here. The scope of works covered by the 3 billion project are shoreline slope protection, internal road network, internal bridges, you can see it there, drainage systems, so storm surge protection, access ways, security detachments, buildable lands for commercial and roughing for business continuity management, then ancillary businesses, all right, including this. So the 23 Marina, billion terminal, will not include uh, the ano, the ancillary businesses or includes including, that? including the ancillary because this ancillary business we earn from this 25% without any capital we earn 25% of the revenues but ito, the 23 ito, billion ito. itself uh, no, that no. cost is that going to cover the <laughs> the creation yeah. of these uh, facilities, a marina, a bus terminal, a yacht yes. club, or yes. is yes. it for the uh, island building and Alone. the systems? No, no. no, no. It includes the bridges, includes the wastewater treatment facilities because it's part of their uh, prestation. It's part of their doables, no? Or deliverables. Marina, bus terminal, yacht club, ferry, clubhouse. And uh, actually, the... the uh, <laughs> The selection committee will uh, will will report uh, based on the selection committee report all all of this. Na ay uh, anong uh, projected uh, revenue generation ang uh, submitted for the next 25 years. Basta 25 percent of whatever income from these ancillary businesses will be part of the will part of the. Uh, will be uh, revenues to the city government. Wala na PRA. So the PRA well, only uh, okay. shares in the land, not sa ancillary businesses. Appeal na na sa 23 billion. So your, your reading of this provision, uh, Mr. Mayor, Section 3, 3.1, Roman hmm. numeral 1, uh, okay. letters A to H. No, 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 no. no. That, that one is clear. Oh, you, oh, you. Okay. Yeah, MOU, the latest version. Okay, okay. Memorandum of Understanding. Section 3. Sakto okay. ba? Okay. Okay. Yeah, Section 3. Section 3, 3.1, uh, Roman numeral 1. Uh, and then Roman numeral 1 shows that the scope of works covered by 23.354 billion project cost. And then there's an enumeration, no? A to H. Karon, ang Roman numeral 2 is not part of the enumeration. Yeah, no, it's part of so the... They, they your interpretation here is that it's part of Roman numeral 1's inter, uh, enumeration. Is that correct? Well, they will do that. Uh, part of the 
part of their deliverables. But the bottom line here is this, whether or not it, uh, their estimate is correct, they have to deliver this ancillary business to the city. Okay, so, so they, they committed in principle to pay for yes. this. They, they not only in principle, in, 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 by contract, they will deliver that. Is it, is they, it this they, contract? Are, is it this contract that you are showing us? Yes, MOU. MOU. But yes. this MOU uh, is subject to the final contract, which is the PPP contract, which will be uh, which will be entered into between the city and uh, and uh, PRA uh, and the developer or Cuerpo only after we have gone through the process of DNR and the PRA. And it will again go back to the city council for the making of an ordinance for public another round of public discussion. Okay. Mm, okay. MOU, let me clarify, is not the PPP contract that I that uh, that people are you know uh, some uh, some lawyers or some people are saying that ito na yon you know because if you see this contract in uh, 6.2.3 uh, this MOU it says there 6.2.3 you know uh, 6.2.3 okay it says here uh, na makita naman na mo ganiyo that upon the issuance of reclamation permit and the notice to proceed by the city and the PSP shall and the city and the PSP shall enter into PPP contract to be approved by the Sangonian pursuant to PPP ordinance. So obviously this is the MOU is not yet the PPP contract, which uh, will still be going to still going to be uh, entered into. Sure. Okay. Well, and, and another and another one, nine point two, another one, sorry. Yeah. 9.3, to show you that it's really not a contract, it, it says here, uh, 9.3, uh, it says here that should, the, uh, no? in the event that the this uh, the application uh, with, the, with the Philippine Reclamation Authority and VNR uh, to pursue this project shall be denied with finality, then there's nothing to, there's nothing to worry because all rights and obligations under this contract shall become uh, without will be without force and effect. All right. Uh, okay. So, so Mr. Mayor, kaning kaning ko an kaning it raises some questions, no. Pero before we get to the questions regarding this MOU and how it's not the PPP contract, uh, there is a question that uh, asks. Um, oppositors are saying that you don't need this MOA to start the application process with the PRA. The law aside, can you explain how having a, let's call it an MOU because that's the name, the MOU with EM Cuerpo will now benefit Dumaguete? So in short, I think the question is what is the purpose of this MOU if you're saying that this is not the contract envisioned by the no, uh, this is not this is not the final contract because the final contract will be uh, still go through the process of, uh, let's say, for example, the PP, PRA. It, nothing in this contract which says how much, uh, what, what, uh, what, how big an area will the PRA uh, 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 no, uh, benefit from. No, no or, correct. But I think yeah, the question no. is how can having this MOU be beneficial yes. to do yes. Magetenios. Correct, correct. First of all, first of all, uh, this MOU, when you when we apply with the PRA, PRA, by the way, has advisors, no? Like the the NEDA and the uh, Department of Finance and the DNR. Now uh, before the uh, the after that, after we had that, the city would have applied uh, PRA, and before the MOU with the PRA would be uh, executed, the PRA would have to ask us uh, how financially viable is this project and who will undertake this project. If without this MOU, the the PRA would would assume that uh, it's the city that will pay for everything. Because we have nothing to show them that we have already a private party that will undertake this finance, financing this project. So, magotana na sila with the city's uh, third-class uh, 
uh, classification and uh, with us uh, not uh, loaning any money, uh, 23 billion, it will be denied because uh, nothing will show, there's nothing to show uh, PRA that uh, we have already a partner. Besides, in this contract, it says there that the private proponent will pay for all uh, application fees, uh, processing fees, etc., etc., which will go, which will even uh, go to the millions of pesos. At least three, sa BNR pa lang, sa mga ECC, sa PRA, it, it, it will, you know, it will reach millions of pesos. So, wala na, wala ikwan, eh. With this, we cannot hold the private party from, we cannot tell the private party to pay for this, uh, for this application for uh, the processing fees without a contract with them. Okay? So, so you're saying, so you're saying um, that this contract, you're saying that this contract, this MOU, is a yes. way by means you wish to hold the PSP accountable for the fees that need to be paid when the city will apply with the PRA. Is that correct? That's one. Second is that we have to show, prove to PRA, that uh, it's not the city that will uh, uh, fund this, but it's another party. It's but a I think in the party. process with the PRA, I, I, I did not see that that is necessary. Could you identify uh, where in the uh, IRR that, that, that is stated? Because I think in the IRR of the uh, PRA, they, they do mention that the uh, city or the LGU will initiate. There are pre-qualification requirements, but then eventually there will still be this um, competitive bidding. So, yes. I'll show you a what? I'll show you a template of the PRA contract. Uh, yeah, maybe not the template, sir, but uh, the the provision that requires that you already have a partner. Yun siguro yung ano helpful. Yes, yes. but but uh, because it template, it says there that how how can you prove to PRA that. Uh, that uh, it's not the city is going to finance this unless it has a, a MOA, MOU, which is not yet the PPP contract. Because in this MOU, uh, it's not complete uh, to make it a PPP contract. Okay, ang, P ang PRA would still, would still uh, uh, decide on how much would be the sharing. The P PRA can even say it's 60 yes, Understood, sir. But I think the, the question lang is because you said that uh, having a partner is necessary for the application uh, with the yes. PRA. And yes, I yes, think yes, just for be. clarity's sake, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was asking if you could point to a provision in the IRR that states that because um, if you read the... Uh, contents of the IRR, it does not specifically state that it is a requirement. So I think maybe that would clarify lang this this yeah. particular point. We have a template uh, which was shown to us by PRA of uh, an agreement which which says there, right? This is a template of the agreement uh, up the second, you know, so first part, first part, first part lang. So it says there, okay, and the Philippine recognition and indicate the government entity or qualified Filipino individual or uh, private entity with office address at, okay, yeah. So, in other words, uh, okay, name so of you're pacing, So you're basing your assertion on this template where yeah. and it also, is mentioned that yeah. uh, you indicate the government entity or the qualified Filipino individual or private sector entity. This is your basis for saying that and, it and is a also, requirement yeah. to have a partner when you yeah. apply for ano, reclamation with the PRA. Is that yeah, correct? Because, yes. Because okay, how can we, right. And also on the logic that how can we be, uh, how can we pass scrutiny as a PRA that we are we are capable of uh, undertaking the project if we don't have anything in writing 
that uh, yeah. private but I think uh, I think Mr. Mayor the that's the reason why the feasibility studies are required and all these other plans for approval but anyway, yes, but I, anyway think, I think we have exhausted this point because we cannot yeah. pinpoint a particular provision in the IRR that requires a partner so um, perhaps we can move on we have uh, a lot of other questions maybe yeah. we can move on from uh, the contracts and proceed to the other questions regarding, for example, all right, uh, the, this now touches on real property taxes. From when can the city start collecting real property taxes? From day one of the construction of the project or only after the parcels of land are apportioned entitled? It's a basic, uh, basic Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe you yeah. need to elaborate on this. Yeah. No, no, it's not. Uh, it, it's not a problem. It's, it did not even be. It did not even be stated in any contract. We can only, I don't know, we can only uh, uh, impose realty pro uh, real property taxes when the property is already in the hands of a private individual. When it's in the uh, in hands, or rather, in the in the name of the private individual. The city cannot tax itself real property tax, nor the national government. However, the buildings that would be erected on the, on the, uh, on the, uh, on the uh, smart city project or on the land no, would still be subject of uh, real property tax. Whether these buildings are in 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 uh, uh, on 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 the land area owned by the national government or the city government or the private or the private entity right and so just to clarify you know the process is a bit long because uh, you will have the reclamation and then after that it, is, it will have yes. to go through a process yes. of uh, titling yes. special patent yes. presidential proclamation and then yes. after that uh, it will go it's to the city process. Yeah. So how, how long process. how long do you estimate that to be? Well, the based on the the uh, template MOU, first it will take at least two years and a half for for the city to go through DNR, PRA, DNR, and back to PRA. So two years and a half depends. Okay, and the the commitment is that. Uh, the the whole the project include the uh, just the horizontal just the horizontal development it will take three years from the award from the mm. notice to proceed so three years plus three is already six years all right so uh, depends on how how uh, receptive the future locators will be it could take. From, from six years, it could take another five to 10 years. So the process is long. I will not be, I'm sure I will not be mayor uh, uh, even at the time of uh, uh, the approval of this project. But we have to start somewhere. We have to start application. So if the applications uh, if the defective, we will not pass scrutiny of PRA. Or there are some deficiencies, we will not pass through uh, scrutiny is a DNR. So really, if there are deficiencies, uh, we will have to, we can, or we will have to comply, okay, if there are, no? But we have to apply first in order to know what are the deficiencies, okay? Mm. Okay, yeah. so you project that it will take about six to 10 years before anything years. comes to fruition. Yeah, maybe uh, five. Oh. So, in in that respect, Mr. Mayor, um, yeah. have you have you considered other paths for growth and employment uh, that better suit the current profile of a university town like Dumaguete? Maybe like the development of a BPO industry with national revenues expected to grow to twenty nine billion dollars, and BPO, is, you know. is expected you put, to add more yeah. than one. 130,000 jobs by 2022. Is this not a feasible path to consider as opposed to this big 
reclamation project? Well, uh, it's not a one. It's not a uh, a uh, a BPO project. It's part of the. It's part of the uh, the uh, facilities that would be in the smart city project. All but right, but I think the question, words, yeah. what the question yes. is asking is not as part of the smart city, but inland Dumaguete, can we not yes. cultivate? Yes. You, you know, you know, yes. it's easier said than done. I have uh, challenged five big land owners in Dumaguete. First, we don't have money to, to afford their lands. I, I even told them, or the city can loan. If uh, maybe those five big land owners, I told them, can uh, I want what would happen if I expropriate your property at 2,000 per square meter? Would you allow it to happen? Or you would hire lawyers to, uh, to oppose it? So it's really impossible to, considering the size of the Maguete, 3,300 with barely 500 or 400 uh, hectares for agricultural land and a lot of lands now devoted to residential purposes, well, it's easier said than done. Okay? So, so you're saying already, that it's my experience. Not, this yes, is not yes. possible. It's not possible. Okay, it's, so uh, it's it's it's. Uh, I think uh, I think the message is clear that uh, developing other alternatives for employment is not possible inland, and inland, uh, what you what you deem as feasible and possible is the reclamation project and then building there and then establishing industries mm. on I, that. I don't, we don't have is the that, luxury that of space. We don't have the luxuries of space uh, as Bayawan, Gihulgan. And, and uh, another reason is that I want to preserve the inland as a, a, as, uh, as a historical site, as a, uh, uh, the serenity of the inland, the, you know, we just have to we just have to master plan it that uh, uh, it will not, uh, the uh, informal settlers are being uh, taken care of, and a new it will be kind in some kind of a, a heritage area or a old city, and a new well planned city, because when you when you master plan or when you start fiddling or reconstructing the old city. You will have to make a lot of compromises there in terms of uh, uh, of uh, the people, the properties that will be affected. So it okay. will really take so much time. I think we can uh, touch a little bit more on that in the other questions. Um, there, there is a question here. The the city should ensure that the not just the Dumaguete job pool be exhausted before a job is filled by a foreign worker, but the job pool of Negros Oriental and the rest of the Philippines before any jobs are filled by foreign workers. I agree. This was this must, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll finish the question. Uh, this yeah. must go through a city and dole vetting process before any jobs are filled by foreign workers. And a provision by the city must be made to ensure this is enforced and that any violation and circumvention of this be criminally or civilly punishable by law. So uh, a question to this is that it has been raised that if um, the reclamation will be done through dredging, which is a very um, technical field, who would be working uh, during this uh, process, the dredging process, and when EM Cuerpo, the contractor and the subcontractor comes to, to begin island building? Will it be the, the uh, constituents of Dumaguete? Will they be hired? Or will other um, nationalities or other maybe employees from different regions be brought in? You see, there are uh, existing laws that already cover those uh, instances. You cannot get a, uh, a working permit from our DOLE, Department of Labor, if there are, if you're a foreigner, if there are uh, locally available uh, individuals who have the same skills to do that. Right, yes. Okay? And this is not just the making of uh, uh, 
of the uh, of the project but it is when when you make the buildings when you uh, when you fill the buildings with uh, let's say bpos with the students and all the nurses the hospitals etc cetera, etc cetera. by the way if this will be um, i cannot speak for the contractor no but i can already foresee that a or an ordinance can be made to this effect that's one it has been done in cavite sa industrial park that all uh, workers should come from cavite except for highly technical people okay and uh, the D the uh, dole the immigration and the dfa will not allow uh, foreign workers unless there there are no available uh, uh, skilled workers in the philippines second reason is that it would be uh, uh, logistically advantageous to the contractor if they get local our dumagete our our uh, minimum wage is about 370 380 even compared to uh, manila or cebu has higher minimum wage more so with foreigners the foreigners they, they talk of china I think the, it was mentioned uh, as of late, mga 2,000 plus uh, yuan ang ilang minimum wage times 7.7, mabot of 20,000 pesos. So, so it is your opinion yeah. that uh, these jobs for the building of this island will go to the locals who may not have uh, maybe a background on this? Or are you saying that um, it depends. It depends on the technical expertise available in the local pool, and it will depend on the contractor because they'll be the ones doing yes. the work. dredging. Let's say, for example, if they use uh, dump trucks, there are drivers. Uh, they cannot. The drivers are. Uh, preferably from Dumaguete and the Dumaguete drivers cannot even uh, you can hardly find uh, maybe 1,000 or 2,000 drivers it would uh, it would have its rippling effect on the whole labor force of Negros Oriental and even outside of Negros Oriental so okay, it's, thank it's you. Thank about, you for that, yeah, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. I think uh, if we venture into the dump trucks discussion, there are questions here that talk yeah. about the effects also of having all these trucks pass through such narrow streets. So we're going to get to that later. Um, but mm -hmm. related to the questions on jobs, what yeah. initial plans have been outlined in order to ensure employment? Ah, okay, this was this was asked earlier. The question now is, have things like quotas been discussed? Meaning, is there a quota that you are talking about with the contractor that if you are going to start building here, you need to hire X percent of locals? Well, that can be incorporated in the, if that's a good suggestion, then we can be incorporated in the PPP contract. It, it, uh, there's no prohibition from doing that. The ordin uh, as I said, the city council can pass an ordinance so that effect. Well, All right. it, can be, it can be incorporated. So if the uh, city has an ordinance, we can just say that the PPP contract has to has to abide by the PIP, the existing ordinances of the city. A follow up to this is: Are retraining and upskilling plans being considered in order to allow the local labor force to adapt to the industries that are expected or likely to be set up? in the smart city correct uh um thank you for that question because we have uh, have a uh, a partnership now with tesda uh, in fact the provincial training school of tesda is being built in a land owned by domagete city so uh, we anticipate even those displaced supposedly mga, if there are fisher folks that will be displaced they will be trained Tesla. We have a partnership with the Tesla to, to uh, as I said, to retool our labor force so that the much necessary, much needed uh, uh, job uh, jobs uh, with particular job descriptions will be met by our local labor force. 
All right. Um, there's a question here, Mr. Mayor. Is there a risk assessment completed for the project outside of the environmental impact? This pertains to the project's viability and any factors that could adversely impact the completion of the project, for example, capital funding, regulatory risks, resourcing risk, logistical risks, and all other risks imaginable. Maybe in addition to this is who do you envision investing in this smart city? Okay. Um, as I said, and I have to mention again, the when you apply with the PRA, the feasibility, financial feasibility will be will be uh, will be a requirement. No feasibility is on the financial aspect, and it will pass through the legal, the opinion of NEDA and the uh, Department of Finance. If in your in their assessment uh, this does not fly or meet their the requirements, then it will be denied. So it is now up for to the to the city or to the specifically to the uh, to the proponent. To justify it with uh, with the PRA. All right. Um, okay. So, in other so words, there are agencies that will take care of it. Okay, but I think that the questions are coming from the available documents now, and so I think maybe this is uh, a big part of the reason why there have been such heated debates because yeah. I think. Um, it's a very important development to talk about, and the absence of availability of the information and even maybe um, concrete plans um, is, you know, a cause for concern for some. So I think that's that's why the questions are coming, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I know. In fact, uh, I'd like to clarify that there are no uh, detailed engineering plans yet, unless and until uh it's being acquired by by the pra and the right. uh, DLR, okay but so, uh, okay that's why we cannot discuss the detailed engineering plans unless uh they are ready but to, fact, but to, I, I but to jump on that people. but but to jump on that statement mr mayor maybe you can clarify to the audience now what is the role of the 2021 PPP ordinance in all of this, because in the 2021 PPP ordinance, there are three stages to, to this process. And in fact, the first stage includes the draft PPP contract already and the, the feasibility studies, etc. And the third stage is the Swiss challenge or the competitive challenge. Now, I think a lot of the confusion stems from the fact that there was a Swiss challenge conducted last April. And so maybe you can use this time to clarify what is the role of 2021 PPP ordinance. And in addition to that, if you will um, consider the proposal was received in 2019, November, so would it not be the case that it's the 2016 ordinance that applies? It's your, it's a legal, it's a, it can be debated upon, no? But uh, <laughs> under our, the, the selection committee considered the amendment as, as the amendment of the ordinance, because it's a continuing thing, you see? The 2016 VP ordinance was already superseded by the 2021. Uh, 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 a mandatory uh, ordinance, all right? Okay. Now, um, as to your concern on uh, um, uh, the, the feasibility study, there is such thing as, well, this is really a confusion because people already assume that uh, although there is such thing as a feasibility study, there is such, also such thing as an initial feasibility study because only until you you the proponent has gone through the first the marine survey the actual size of the of the project because maybe through the marine, marine survey the 174 can just be 74 <laughs> or whatever it is it's not feasible so uh, the there will be a a permanent or a rather a feasibility study submitted already to, 
to uh, to PRA, uh, PRA yes, once the detailed engineering plans are ready and uh, finalized. Because as of now, these are only conceptual plans and initial feasibility study until we go through the the physical and actual marine survey, okay, and the approvals by the PRA or the DNR. There cannot be a final feasibility study, there cannot also be a PPP contract that is with finality. In the uh, 2021 yeah. ordinance, the procedure is clear. So perhaps you can clarify um, how you will marry the interpretation because it seems yeah. as if, it seems as if there was a semblance of um, following the procedure, especially with the um, Swiss challenge stage three, but it's being said that stage one was not completed because there was no feasibility or project study, and no, no, it, no, is initial, being, initial it is being asserted. Study. It is being asserted that there is also no draft PPP contract. So, yes. how where does where does the ordinance come into play? You see, as I said, there is an initial feasibility study, first of all, no? And if there are infirmities, whether if there are infirmities in the where, where is the where is the initial feasibility study? Has it been released? Because I don't think um the public no, 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 no. knows. Yeah, it's it's all in the it's all in the uh, documents submitted to the selection committee. The problem okay. there is that yes, yes. And, uh, will, you, will you make the documents available to the public oh, if, if they yeah, it, request, it, it, yes, if the so, citizens yes, request? Yes, yes. But, you know, on the legalities, uh, those who are really bent on opposing this, you should pray that uh, there are infirmities. Because, well, if, but, yeah, no, no, because if this... No, pass, but Mr. If Mayor, pass, I, think, yes. I think that's unfair. I think that's unfair to say. Because if, you, if, if we look at it from a purely objective, perspective Correct. Correct. right it's not no, no, to we, say that people are bent on opposing but i no, think no, no. what to people those, are trying to do no no no, no because no. you said people are bent on opposing no, no, no. i to think from a purely, purely objective perspective it's because it's unclear there's no transparency no, no, no. Kaya, kaya we're having this dialogue now so Correct. that we can Correct. uncover uncover what have, is it really again if you have a uh, uh, I, I said to those who are bent on opposing this, okay, they should be lucky. They should be happy that there are bent, meaning those who are close their minds already. Okay, yeah, let me clarify. I, no, yeah, no. but those I don't think that's qualify. helpful language, Mr. Mayor. No, 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 no. It is helpful because, because <laughs> if there are legal, in, yeah, yeah, you know, if there are legal infirmities, yeah. then uh, it will not pass through PPRA. Meaning mm -hmm. we are lawyers. You are yes. a lawyer, I'm a lawyer. Supreme Court justices differ in their... Oh, yes, but then they differ on... Uh, no, very, very specific... No, no, no. no. You do not assume. You know, already... This is a large question because my question is, where does the 2021 PPP ordinance factor in? That's the question because well, I think this is, is, this is what's has... generating the commotion. No, no, no. What is generating the confusion is that those who have different interpretation as uh, members of selection committee okay okay so if they you differ then you there are other avenues you can go to court and question this because you know i cannot i cannot force uh, anyone any lawyer any individual to to take our position on this for yes, example, but what is the, the position? MOU, what is the position, Mr. Mayor? I think that's yes, just the question. What is yes, your position on the role of the 2021 example, PPP ordinance? Because there's a procedure, eh? and in yes, fact, yes, um, yes. give me a moment. Give me a moment, because okay. in fact, uh, in Section Three B of the PPP ordinance. It talks about the general welfare and the public good shall always be promoted and the transparency, public accountability, and social accountability mechanisms and approaches shall be integrated in PPPs from inception to implementation. And so this is the reason why I think the questions are kind of you know revolving around the 2021 PPP ordinance because there was no transparency until uh, the move, 
the move to have um, the letter of authority given that to is, the mayor. That is, that is precisely, uh, that is the question. Yeah. That is why we're handling, we are going through the, uh, the uh, process of public information, public consultation, because then again, at this point in time, there is no PPP contract to talk about. So and, you're, and then, you're, sorry, the process sorry. here, the process here in Section 18, it is of your view that you did not undergo this process. Is this no, correct? It's not, that. it's not that. We, it is my position that the selection committee underwent all these processes. And it is our position uh, based on the selection committee that uh, everything is above board. Now, okay, so if, if the selection were, committee underwent all the processes, it yes. is clear in Section 18 that there needs to be a feasibility or project study and draft PPP contract. So yeah, I okay, think okay. that's the question. Yeah, where is it? The, there is, there is, these are in the documents. So it's a, these are, remember, proposed PPP contract. All right? Proposed PPP contract, which draft even yeah yes draft it's you know you cannot the draft or proposed PPP contract it remains a proposed a proposal unless adopted by the city correct These no are correct part but, of the, the, but yes. the point the point Mr Mayor is that there is no draft proposed no. PPP contract to speak of but there's an MOU so I think what just no, no, needs no, no, to no, be no. clarified precisely, precisely. is what you, is this process. We what is the process? You, you see, the point is that is part of the confusion because you assume that there is no proposed PPP contract or proposed JVA. It so is there, is, it is, so there is a, a PPP proposed. contract. No, no. A draft. A proposed. No, I, I proposed because it is an unsolicited proposal. Mm -hmm. The government does not, have to, does not have to agree to the PPP contract. That's why in the MOU, we refer that the, the PPP contract will only be uh, will only uh, will only be executed after all this. It's in the MOU itself. No, correct. That's why, yes, but it's I in think the MOU. I think we're we're not talking about the MOU, sir. Yes, we're talking about is. the 2021 PPP ordinance. Yes. So I, I think yeah. maybe we're trying to clarify, right? I mean, in section yes. 18, if you there want, are three you stages. Want, you want there a clarification? You want a clarification? Uh -huh. I told you, I said that's precisely the point. People do not have the people do not know that there is a proposed or a draft PPP contract or a JVA that is proposed by the proponent. All right. Where it is, is only, where is it? And is it this is part, it is part of the documents that were submitted? So is this the, uh, don't you think a, that in and, the interest the way, of transparency? And yes. public and accountability, has, these yes. documents need to be released? It will, yes. Yes, it will be. Because, I think um, some way, requests it, have been made no, to your office. No. Uh, feasibility study. <laughs> feasibility, no, no, by the way, feasibility study, we, by feasibility study, is the initial feasibility study. These are, this will be explained by the, uh, uh, by the representative of the selection committee. All these documents are available. The only problem is, one of, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, we suspect that one of the members of the selection committee gave the public or whoever they are, copies of the documents available to them. So I th we thought that all these documents were already available to them because all the members of the selection committee have uh, copies of the uh, proposal. But shouldn't that have been the default anyway? The documents should have been made public? No, the, because you, isn't 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 the mandate or the operative principle uh, transparency? Yes, I transparency. think I think maybe that's I think you that's see, the question. Yeah. Yeah. The, yes. The point is the point is before I can even read some of those documents, the you know who they are. They were already posting uh, in the Facebook their their own interpretation. So that's the confusion. That's the confusion. It will it will know. Uh, it will boomerang or it will uh, it will be clarified like for example you know, the, the the strongest uh, or this an argument which says that this cuerpo uh, is not uh, financially qualified based on the uh, net worth but it's there in the nfcc in the 
uh, net uh, financial contracting capacity that they are uh, qualified, more than qualified to do the job because it is uh, based on the on the uh, NFCC submitted by uh, by the proponent. They are twenty eight billion seven hundred nineteen uh, million uh, qualified to do a project as as large as 28.719. Otherwise, this would not pass scrutiny as a selection committee. Okay, well, I, thought, I think, yes, I think and, we've, we've gone beyond, uh, I think we've exhausted this topic because the question long, Mr. Mayor, was how yeah. is the 2021 PPP ordinance yes, factoring? I mean, yes, and you were discussion. saying that, and you were assuming that there is no uh, uh, draft or proposed PPP contract or JV and no feasibility study. I told you, for your clarification, that these documents were submitted, part of the documents submitted to the selection committee. So right? why were there, there, there were a lot of um, pronouncements that there was no draft PPP contract. No, I think in no, the, like, in no, the no, last, no, no. In no, the last uh, council mean? hearing, uh, I think it was uh, Councillor Ramon who kept repeating that there was none, and no, I think that that contributed to the mis, no, I guess, the misunderstanding that there no, are documents, pala, but they're just not being released to the public. No, that, yeah, that's that's the understanding, right? Yeah, that I mean, that's why we are there. here to clarify. Uh -huh. I'm here to clarify, no? The what perhaps was uh, was uh, misinterpreted was the fact that. What we are saying, the government is saying, the executive is saying that uh, there is no PPP contract yet, uh, even proposed to be approved by the council. It's still an MOU. Okay, okay. well, MOU, anyway, I, I think, Mr. Mayor, the, the, this, we're going around in circles eh, because yes, I, I do yes, want no. to go back to the ordinance, but I think we can leave this. Na lang. Yes, yes, uh, yes. We, can, we can proceed to other questions. Na lang. Uh, yes, all right. Yes. Uh, let's talk about population growth. There's a question here that states, what overall population growth does the city government anticipate this expansion? And can this realistically be supported by the available resources? For example, power supply, water, food, etc. If not, what are the city government's plans to increase resources to meet the anticipated increase in demand? And what are the contingencies to address any shortfalls? Well, you're going uh, going ahead no, of the of the project, which is also good. Huh? Suppose it will be approved in the next six years. We still have time to uh, to coordinate with uh, first uh, power, Noreco, has to prepare. Pre pre prepared for this, uh, Manila uh, Metro Mani Dumaguete, Met Metro Dumaguete water should be prepared for this. And other uh, uh, suppliers or uh, service providers, they should be prepared for this. Now, well, so example, I think- another one, is, another one is uh, the, the uh, promoted itself. I don't have the, uh, based on their, they, they can even decide to put up their own power in, in, in the 174. If they find out that the Noreco or the Metro Dumaguete cannot provide the necessary uh, uh, power, water for them. So then again, there is not no, it would still be based on the final feasibility study. If this will be master planned well, you know, we are going ahead of this because. Uh, 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 I even suggested this should be must should be master planned by the uh, known master planners, in perhaps in Singapore. Singapore. They are uh, they are supposed to be experts in this in master planning. Okay, so I, I'm assuming that the project proposal does not include a plan to address the intermittent supply of electricity and water yet. Do not right? make some because, assumptions. Do not make no, some because, assumptions. Because you said no, you said you said that uh, the proponent can explore putting up their own power, et cetera, on the yeah, reclaimed island. Yeah. So in the next six years. So uh, yes. First, uh, they, they have to, I mean, if I were the proponent, I would, uh, I would explore first the existing service providers. Kung kulang, kung 
is insufficient, then I can provide my own power source. Okay, but this is not this is not yet happening now. No, correct. Okay. No, no, not happening okay. now. As we speak now, they are now. Uh, it's not part are, of their study. No, as we speak okay. now, I know that there are uh, there are uh, para exploratory talks with uh, with the water, and uh, I don't know yet with the electricity. But I know okay. that the water and our exploratory talks already. All right. Another question. How does the project plan to address transportation issues? The expansion implies an increase in population and therefore an increase in the number of vehicles. How is the rest of the city going to cope with a higher traffic density given most existing roads are narrow and not built to accommodate these higher level of vehicle volume? Is there Precisely. a plan to widen existing yeah. roads? Yeah. Precisely the uh, the the, uh, uh, the smart city uh, uh, is uh, designed. It will be designed so much so that the roads are wide, the roads are not uh, uh, the roads are wide, and uh, to accommodate future expansion. And unlike the city now, okay, there's a lot of problems when you uh, it will take time to widen the roads because of uh, road right of way problems. So this will be addressed in a master plan. It, perhaps uh, when you master plan this, uh, you would get uh, consultants on transportation. Uh, so, so, so these are things that are not, uh, are not pro a problem uh, because these are things that will be considered when you are now uh, master planning or building a smart city. All right, so there are no plans yet as to addressing transportation issues, right? The, this will be part of the... You know, so, yeah, so, but as, uh, as of now, there are no plans yet. As to the 174, yes. Yeah, okay. I, I uh, don't know yet. There's no master plan yet. But right? how about the city itself, Dumaguete City or old Dumaguete, as you yeah. say? The, the mainland uh, mainland or the old Dumaguete, we have our own way of uh, we are we have now uh, we have the bridges that will uh, help uh, decongest the traffic we are widening the roads with the DPWH we have the diversion road we uh, we plan to uh, to make a satellite market in Baumpandan, which will dramatically reduce traffic in uh, in uh, the, the 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 main population or the population area, we already have the uh, uh, the satellite hospital, which will be in uh, which is uh, which has been started seventy percent complete, which will be in in uh, Talai that will also decongest uh, people uh, people coming uh, to the population because that will service those from the upper upper Dumaguete area. We are our uh, our waste uh, disposal is is already uh, uh, in uh, uh, the boundary of Kamanhak and and uh, and uh, Kandawai, which will soon be operational. Ang uh, ang um, ang uh, pyrolysis machine August. So much that uh, uh, we will no longer uh, dump our residuals in by one so th th that's what we do that's what we're yeah, doing but it seems like in in this in this um overview that you've given it seems like you have done a little bit of expanding to the outer parts of the city and i think uh, a question earlier asked can't development go in that direction instead of reclaiming an island as i have said Okay, if if you if, if there are at least uh, first of all, the city does not have money to expropriate to acquire lands inland. Second, if there are five uh, at least five big landowners who would first donate or allow us to acquire these properties at a at the uh, assessment based on our city assessor's office, is that possible? I have I have laid the challenge. I have made the challenge to these uh, individuals. But again, it's almost impossible. It's not impossible because, for our experience, please take our word for it. In the making of the 20 meters wide diversion road, it took us six years to convince 
uh, a property owner of a 100 square meter lot. We had to yeah. file a case in court. So uh, it's easier said than done. Okay? No, but I think I think Take I was just it. reflect I reflecting this. back uh, your your overview, Mayor, because you you gave a very nice overview of a satellite market in Bombandan, yes, yes. uh, a satellite uh, hospital here, a diversion yes. road here. So it seems as if not, that these yes, are things that are with the, within the realm of possibility. And so that's just no, no, where no, the question came from. You're, uh, you're, you're talking of uh, 170 or at least you say 100 hectares of contiguous land. You cannot, you cannot do it here. You cannot. You don't have that luxury of uh, land area without affecting your your uh, agricultural lands and your residential lands. It, it's you know uh, you have to be practical about it. We know some things that are are not known to public. The difficulty in planning and execution. That's why it's difficult for any for any local chief executive to if you don't have the political will. It's really difficult uh, because. A, 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 a small landowner can make it difficult for you. you see, uh, even uh, convincing the informal settlers to relocate to our new uh, a new area that will uh, will be reserved for them. So this is this is how it is. No, we will not touch the main Dumaguete, the uh, dry land. Uh, it would be easier to build a new area which can be master planned well. All right. So I see the, the vision, the vision, Mayor, is that uh, old Dumaguete is difficult uh, to, to rearrange, so to speak. And exactly. there are many, many processes that need to be done, very difficult to expropriate, the roads are small. And the solution to this is to build an island where there will be 174 hectares of contiguous land wherein you can implement a master plan. That's correct, a, right? Ideally, yes. A master plan, which is, uh, uh, which is uh, to improve the mobility, the quality of life. Uh, it's going to be a livable place. It would uh, retirement uh, villages. So these are uh, under the new and the new approach to development, we we use technology now to make it easier for us: clean water, clean air, use of uh, uh, renewable energy, green buildings, mostly uh, promenade, jogging area, trees, and all this. Uh, yeah, parts. all right. So this I think that was part yes. of the presentation, Naman. Right. Um, right. Let's yes. go to ano, the next question, Mr. Mayor. Uh, how is the increase in air pollution, given a larger number of motor vehicles, going to be addressed? Or is this also part of the future master plan? You see, you, you may have a problem with the uh, tricycle drivers now. Actually, uh, uh, ideally, the if you go by the by the directives now of the national government, there is now uh, there is now a move to modernize transportation by using electric run uh, motor vehicles, both private and public. So, uh, if you want quality of life, you see, uh, eventually uh, you cannot avoid but uh, to adapt to the changes that as you know the changes. To, uh, to really to make our city livable. But yeah, it, may okay. not, it, it may not be now. It, it will take I, a, it, it will, will take, take time. Not only time to uh, convince the people who will be affected. Yeah, and also yeah. I think there's a lot of considerations. That's what we're talking about now. Eh? Yeah, um, ito, ito lang, okay. For example, just uh, the word do ma get me. It, it took about six to one year to, to, to convince and to. to to uh, to uh, to stop the bashing of the word Duma get oh, me. Well, that's beside yes. the point, <laughs> Mr. No, no, Mayor. No, uh, this is as simple as that. A no, I, I, I don't a, think so. I, I I think we can no. I think we can proceed because I, I don't yes. think that this is this is uh, connected not to the topic or the question at hand. Eh. No, uh, you're because... talking about bashers, but no, no, the, no, no, no. the prob the problem is you know. There, these are valid questions that concerned yeah, citizens are asking. To, no, I'm just saying 
that there will be always uh, questions, even to the simplest matter of, uh, 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 I mean, accepting a donation of an obelisk, 50 million obelisk. There are, you think it's all as simple as that? I thought it was as simple as that. But when it was, act, when we actually accepted the donation, people are starting to, to question it. So it's not as simple as uh, accepting a donation, even the, 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 a, a, free, a freebie or a bonus to the city, it still could be questioned. By yeah, and I think and I think that's anybody the reason why matter. there are a lot of questions now because I think yes. what what is clear what is clear is that uh, this has not been a transparent process. That's why people are asking, and so that is I what think you this are is saying, what is a transparent process. The transparent process. We are now doing the the rounds. We are now explaining to the public to be isn't more transparent. It, than, isn't yes. it after the fact already, Mayor? No, don't you think? It's not after the fact. This is. The, the application has not yet been made. It can be stopped. I, 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 I did not sign any document yet. All right. Okay. You see, this is okay. my part of saying we have to be transparent, and I'm doing it now. Okay. Um, moving After on the to the next that, question. Nagamana, nagamana, wala na kay mahimo. Kini, yeah, but I think, Mr. Ha? Mayor, ano, yung, the, the process we talked about earlier in Section 18, which I don't want to go back to, but uh, I think the Swiss challenge has been concluded with, prior to these info drives that have been made. So it seems as if an afterthought. Uh, no, and maybe, and, it and maybe, the, it and maybe this is the reason why. And I hope you understand that you know this might be the reason why there are a lot of questions. So yeah, moving yeah. on, moving on to the next question, na lang. Uh, how is the increase in waste going to be addressed? Can the existing infrastructure cope, or are there additional facilities included in the plans? That uh, will be now. That will be the you know, now of the master planning of that area. You see, so not yet. Yes, it, be, it, should, it should be addressed. It should be addressed. That should mm. be addressed. We they are addressing the wastewater treatment facility. Even the solid waste should be addressed. It will be okay. part of the. So it's not yet in the plans now. There is no final engineering plan yet. Okay. If you see plans, you have to see the plans, and your inputs are a a, a decent master planner would include everything that you've said. Once you've engaged a master planner, all these things will be included. And it, you know, I am not competent as a master planner to do this, but I know for a fact that once a master plan is made, all these concerns will be addressed. Clean water, clean air, the, the, the roads, the table, where do you, if there's, you allow a, 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 run, a hanging uh, wires there or underground cables from the Mitonimo, all this will be addressed. All these questions are actually part of the master planning. The only okay. issue is young legal and whether we allow reclamation or not. All right. Okay. Well, yes. going back to the matter of uh, generating jobs. All right. So we have a question here. According to the PSA, the Magetas population only grew by 2.07% in five years, which is from 2015 to 2020, from a population of 131,377 to 134,103, or a total of only 2,726. Do you know that Qualfon Dumaguete, whose rented building occupies less than one third hectare of land, has provided jobs for more than 3,000 individuals? Why would you need a project such as yours that destroys the environment and the environmental and cultural fabric of Dumaguete when you can merely attract companies like Qualfon's calibers that can generate jobs that will uh, allow the constituents of Dumaguete to have a decent living. You know, there are two assumptions there that I disagree. When you say it will uh, destroy the cultural, in fact, I, I am the mayor who, my first project was the preservation and restoration of our city hall and creation of the Heritage Council. We do not touch the old Dumaguete, we preserve the old Dumaguete. The, the serenity and beauty of the old Dumaguete will never be touched. That's why we have to have another, a new city, which is an improved version, actually, because you are 
you have master planned and controlled the, the development of this. All right, so there is nothing, uh, uh, this, uh, what you call um, call centers, as I said, uh, can be also uh, accommodated. It's part of the plan is to accommodate these call centers. There will be more space for more, uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, for more call centers um to uh, to give jobs to the to the graduates or the those even uh, uh, studying in college or high school you see uh, the the idea here is to find a contiguous area that can be master planned such that all these things will be will be uh, incorporated what we have now are patches of developments you see if not for the private sector uh, this is not city initiated. These are just spurts of development that are not planned. You see, uh, one call center is in the west side, in the north side. There is no commonality of, you know, uh, there's no homogeneity. There is no uh, coordination. All right. Uh, it, it's a reality that Dumaguete is growing up, not master plan, okay, because the reality is. The, these are these lots are the lands are being owned already by uh, moneyed individuals. Yeah, you but see? I think I think the crux of the question is actually the fact that for one third a hectare of land, it can generate jobs for more than three thousand individuals. So, yeah, if, so the, if the if the if the question is generating jobs, would it not be fair to consider developments such as these inland, which don't need much land, and you know it would spare at least you know the the ecosystems and the yeah. MPAs that are there in in the Dumaguete coastline. I think that's I'm, the that's a crux of the question. Eh? Yes, you see, uh, you're assuming that after we have a marine survey, uh, there will be, a, and, and then we implement the, uh, the reclamation project, there will be massive destruction. The reason for the marine survey is to avoid any destruction or damage, because this can be incorporated, this can be avoided. That is the All basis. Right. But what I I'm think, saying now, I, I that, think, and, and, and I think, this, uh, uh, I think, Mr. Mayor, this is a little off tangent because I think that's also an assumption that there's no massive destruction. And no, from, it's not an assumption because, from, uh, from previous it, speakers, no. Yes, uh, no, because no, number one, number one, let's, let's just say that's an assumption because you admitted that it hasn't been surveyed yet. Maybe yes. we can we can no, we can no, agree. Yes. We can we agree can with agree. that. What? We what can I'm agree saying, on that. I, yeah. What I'm saying, if there will be massive destruction, I will not agree to uh, pursuing the project it's okay. only when you right. yes it's only when you uh, uh when you make a survey that you will actually know I'm not sure now with this let's say a building is uh, uh in a half a hectare or one hectare property is being built do you, do you know and are you are you sure that there are no there were no trees that were uprooted and uh, uh they destroyed because of these uh, buildings they, they, they I think uh, the, the point, the point of be... this, Mr. Mayor, is that uh, there is there is this ano kasi, marine protected areas, upat kabuok, no? uh, the city council of Dumaguete itself issued diba? protection to those areas. So, yeah, na ay assumption, na na ay na ay marine life. Oo, oh, na ay marine life. Yes, yeah. but, oh, oh. Pero, you know, ang, ang ato manggod ka ron, uh, ang ato manggod ka ron, Mayor, koan ra ha, kaning, ako ra tong giklaro tong question gani ha, because, ang punto lang yun sa question ito gani ha, is, kung mahimo man di ay, nga mo generate of more than 3,000 jobs using a third of a hectare of land, Dili ba na siya pwede ma-explore uh, within, inside Dumaguete? Maor, maor ito nga point ko. Haven't you heard what I said or this person who asked that question na uh, if you want to land bank, you cannot do it in Dumaguete. You cannot do it in inland Dumaguete. Okay? So, these are not, uh, this, the, this project is initiated by the government of Dumaguete, not by a private sector. So, okay man ang mga 3,000, 2,000, but you have to have you have to have a uh, 
a contiguous a a, a uh, what you call uh, a, uh, a a size of a land that will be economically uh, economically feasible uh, for for it grow and uh, anticipate growth for the next uh, 10 20 years because right. it's not uh, no, 20 years and this, remember our project is not just for Dumaguete it is for the entire Negros Oriental or even nearby provinces. Okay. Any growth, you anticipate already growth in the future. All right. So All right. Not, maybe not for us, maybe for our and, grandchildren. And and I think what, what is important na lang to highlight, Mangod, is the fact that if there will be damage, you will not proceed. Yes. I think maybe maybe that's the important thing that we yes. can highlight. We will have to uh, yeah. open the mind to people that we have to know first the the uh, the marine uh, eco the ecosystem the actual right. topography because okay. if, it cannot, if it cannot be incorporated if it cannot be avoided then I will not I will not go for replacement All right. even if it's allowed even if it's allowed by an ECC ang importante kung massive yun ang uh, sea life kamo dis ba destroyed can it be incorporated in the design such that it can be avoided para bang win win solution you're yeah. doing jobs and at the same time avoiding that the only yeah. time you will know that it, uh, the actual uh, um, uh, environment the actual, the environment underwater is that to make a survey all so right okay to say, I'm a damage. i want to I know think, i think i think the the constituents will also be waiting in anticipation with that survey yes, yes. Um, and i want i want also a participation by the stakeholders all right okay so that. Uh, well, let's move to the next oh, question, yeah. Mayor. Okay, ang sani kaning hapit na tama ng ten o'clock. We have about okay, twenty plus ha? minutes Where left. Oh, sorry, yeah. Oh, and kaning na yung other question, dire. Uh, concerning po the Chinese, no? Kaning what oh, assurance? Uh, what assurance can you give us that there won't be Chinese construction workers or hotel and hospitality employees employed while building the smart city? What assurance can you give mm -hmm. us that the Chinese language? will not be used as a precondition for employment during the building or in the management of the reclaimed area. You know, by, by, uh, by ordinance, we can do that. All right? By ordinance, we can do that. That's why we have to be vigilant, okay, for the strict, employ uh, strict, strict uh, observance or enforcement of our laws. And why are we so... Why are we so uh, allergic to Chinese? Okay, Madam Zara Marie D, as the the uh, Chinese blood, <laughs> the economy well, of our I, country. For, for the record, I am a Filipino citizen. I was born yes, and raised in the Philippines. A, so I think the question here, Mr. Mayor, yes. is the influx of mainlanders. Ah, so okay. so you are I, I think that's the now. question. No, no, no. The, the, the question, the question. In the, in the, the question kasi is, ah. what is the assurance na Filipino first? Mga yeah, may yeah. question dire. The laws are clear. The present laws of the government, you cannot uh, uh, import workers. They cannot be given working permits. All right. If there are available jobs, if there are available Filipinos, even Chinese Filipinos, not from the mainland, who are in Dumaguete or Negros Oriental or in the Philippines. So these are now another way of doing uh, assurance or the do a, 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 a safety measure is that an ordinance can be passed that only those uh, you know uh, workers which are you know because it will it will uh, it will defeat our purpose. The purpose is to provide jobs for our poor people of Dumaguete and Negros Oriental. So that is our main goal. So let's not be let's be focused on that. So whatever ordinance you can make to to uh, to protect the interests of locals, locals, then we do All right. it. Then so I, I think I think the office. assurance I think the assurance mayor is that uh, an ordinance will be drafted and passed to protect the employment opportunities of locals. Because if we rely if we if not we rely that. on national laws, I think it's important to mention that if you rely on national laws, I think we can see no like Cavite and even in Manila before the pandemic, 
there really was an influx of Chinese nationals, and these were mainly because of Pogos yeah, and all so, the other related okay. businesses. Yeah, so yeah, remember, remember. I, I, I think your, assu- uh, yeah. your, assu- your assurance, your assurance yeah. that the ordinance can be passed, I think, so answers the question sufficiently. Uh, there's another question here. It it uh, touches on the you know, um, environmental. Uh, aspect of of this planned project. No? Uh, it says, I would like to respectfully ask the Honorable Mayor, with all the opposition he is facing, and despite all of the facts provided by scientists and source persons saying that this is a terrible idea, why is he still pushing his agenda? If okay. it's about uh, let me finish. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a long question. If it's okay. about the economic benefits this will provide, isn't there an alternative business model that can be presented to the public? I think you've answered this. Uh, for me, building the 174 hectare smart city on reclaimed land would be the same as building it in the pristine forest of Mount Alinas and saying that it will not affect the environment and we can simply replant, transplant what was lost. Okay. I said, uh, can I proceed? Yes, now, yes, please. Can any environmentalist or scientist say now that he has or she has a map or an inventory of the uh, the corals or the mangroves uh, in our marine uh, marine ecosystem? Nobody has that. Only if we have that, then we will know for a fact that if there is uh, irreparable damage. By the way, corals can be by the way, modern technology, corals can be uh, uh, transferred or relocated. It can be uh, propagated. It can be even uh, uh, incorporated in the design. The, the, in the olden days, or maybe 20 years ago, uh, there is a replace, it can be replaced by artificial reef. So these are, I, I'm looking at a, I am not just mayor of the scientists or the affluent. I'm looking at the whole picture. If there can be a reasonable balance between uh, satisfying and improving the lives of the people of the Mediterranean plus satisfying the uh, the protection and, uh, and the and the preservation of the environment, then let's do it. But mm. that is why I am really excited if we have a map. A, 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 an honest to goodness map that will be also uh, validated by the stakeholders, then, then let's see. Yeah, I'm I think, not, uh, I think uh, uh, let's see. Mr. Mayor, I think uh, just to just to uh, no, uh, chime in chime in on the map, no. I remember mm. Dr. Dr. Rene Abisamis. He presented actually um, this map. It's it's by the Allen Cor. It's it's called the uh, no, Allen Coral Atlas, and this is um, an atlas mapping uh, the coral reef ecosystems and the seagrass ecosystems by the coastline of Dumaguete. So actually, you may have a resource person in Dr. Abisamis if you would like to see that map. Kasi, oh, um, oh, oh uh-oh. updated as of 2021? Uh, this because, is 2020. Oh, no, well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh-huh. We'll see if that can be validated. I don't know how he, he made that map. Or is uh, it he did like- not make it. I think this is funded by, you uh, know, uh, uh, Alan, the founder of you know, Microsoft, the partner oh, of Bill see, Gates. See, and so see, there's yeah. an there's an atlas and it shows actually the area. That's why yeah, that's he was right. he was able to state that uh, actually 60% of coral reef ecosystems kuno, will likely be affected. But you know, oh, well, you can well, have well, well, you well, can well. have that discussion with Dr. Abisamis because yes. uh, he is the scientist here. Yeah, he, we can invite him to to mm-hmm. uh, to 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 witness and participate in the in the uh, making of that map in the it's in the uh, examination of the marine life of Dumaguete over the, the coastal area. Remember um, a, a, the municipal waters is 15 kilometers radius. It's even bigger. I'm too big, and that's bigger than the uh, 3,300 hectares of, uh, of uh, dry land in Dumaguete. So let, let's not debate on that yet. Let the process continue and uh, let's discuss it. Now, I will require, I will require the proponent, by the way, 
to to worry to prove that there will be no damage or be the least damage to the ecosystem because if they cannot uh, incorporate in the design i will be the first one to say let's not continue but mm. at least i can tell the poor people of magete that i tried my best and to show them scientifically that it cannot be done because of the damage to All right. the yeah and i will yeah. uh, and anyway i can share you statistics even the okay. fisheries Yeah. Sige. Um going I mean jumping on that uh, Mr. Mayor no there there yeah. are questions mangod kaning uh, you mentioned the poor people of Dumaguete and the question is how will the smart city exactly impact the poor of Dumaguete is it is it patterned after a model here in Manila like BGC for example or uh, we just I just mentioned a BGC before because of mm. the the size More or less, it's about 200 plus. The market is 174. No, how will it impact? Well, I'll just tell you uh, a non, you know, a uh, let's say if you build a building, okay, uh, in in the in the uh, reclaimed land, you need workers, pandai, mason, etc., etc. Mm. Okay. Uh, those employed in the, you need the cabilia, you need the Uh, you need wood. You need uh, uh, cement. Yeah, all of, all of those things. The all of this. This is the multiplier yeah. effect. The multiplier effect. So that, that, that's how it is. Now, pag nanay hospitals, ba create aside from the building, na na po nurses, na na po etcs, etc., etc. There will be resorts. There will be uh, convention uh, areas about to, to house mga five thousand to ten thousand. Uh, kanang mais bitaw kanang kita wag meetings incentives uh, conferences and uh, exhibitions no that will be good for Dumaguete because uh, Dumaguete is not actually a destination by itself it is just a gateway to maybe Sikihors Apo Island and Sumilon or even the Sumil or even uh, uh, the Oslob uh, or Ba is uh, dolphin watching so With the conventions that you can create, I mean, 10,000 people, 5,000 people, you can make sure that uh, they will stay here for three to five days. Three to five days. And all, all, all this, na na po yung and these are multiplier effects. So, uh, Juan, pero ang, ang growth ba, there's a question ng good here. I'll read it na lang, uh, verbatim. No? Oh, yeah, so we know how, that. How, how does the city government plan then for inclusive growth to ensure improvement in the lives of 12% of the population that are considered poor based on PSA latest property oh, incidents estimate? Even the rich people. Pero, yeah, yeah. But I think the, the, the point of this question, Mangod, oh. is more of how growth can be inclusive. Because if we're talking about jobs for mga labandera, mga driver, mga uh, people oh. who will man the buildings, Um, is there also an impact, uh, for example, in the cost of living in, in the city? And will that now affect the buying power of, of these um, individuals when they earn, but they cannot afford to even, you know, you, you, enjoy? You better, no? you, you, we're, we're talking now of experts in economics. No? But I'm telling you, my, uh, my analysis here is that everybody will be benefited, even the the uh, restaurant owners the the rich uh, the, the big businesses because kung na kay buying power kung na kay if there are jobs no and na buying power um, most of the people if not everyone this will be down to uh, buying some mga malls some mga restaurants mo kaon na ng mga tao so everybody it's it, it's a fun everybody will benefit not just the 12% as you say but everyone And besides, besides the the uh, revenues that the city will uh, will be generating, will be now plowed back to the people. Okay, Mag, like, Makati is the smallest LGU in uh, in Metro Manila, but it reaches because of the investors. Dumagete will try to do that. Kung naate mga kwan, generate nga revenues, then it's my dream to have a decent hostels to to have free hospitalization and for everyone for all the for all the residents then mm-hmm. you can plow back this to mga homeless tagaan ko na nimo sila og kuan uh, balay oh uh, you can uh, subsidize even their food their uh, utilities 
So these are things that we can do if we have dual Manisha, okay? The jobs itself, plus the generation of income for the city without having to rely on the national government. By the way, uh, agencies that will be devolved under the Duterte administration. That means a lot of money will be kita na responsible. Um, so mga, even uh, mga abot ay mga teachers, apilo na galit ni Alina, uh, med, med, medical. Daka na kang ma-devolve na agencies. That's why also in anticipation of that, Dumaguete has to okay, paddle its own kano to to be creative, to be to generate its own income. All right, so that we will not be reliant on the national government. All right, more than that, more than that, go. Let's be, let's have an open mind. Let's uh, let's uh, do the go to the process. Let's find out if what you're saying or what I'm saying is true or not. Kung na ay mga affected nida ko an environment. Sige, let's let's see. If it cannot okay. be done, it cannot be done. Well, going back to the question of ano, no, katong jobs, then increased income. Kuan mang good to me, kaning, although, you know, admittedly, we are not economics experts, pero there was a, there, there are, ano mang good, kanang mga gina-release nga studies ba, nga uh, worst, uh, ano, ang sanay, worst uh, cost of living or kanang, lowest quality of life and Manila actually and this is not to maget na ha, but just additional info Manila is actually on the bottom of this because in Manila it says that the estimated average monthly cost of living for a single person is 50,798 pero the average salary of a person in Manila is only about 18,900 per month so this is um, just uh, one of the studies that show that sometimes growth is not inclusive. That's why these individuals who um, populate, um, let's say, Metro Manila, the city centers, they can't even afford to live there. They have to travel outside, maybe commute two, four hours each way because they cannot afford to live in the center. So you, oh, this is an actual study. Yeah, no, I, was just see, saying, uh, na, I was just saying that... that Oh, uh -oh. The reality is that there are a lot of uh, informal settlers, there are a lot of jobless, you see, and it is the best way we know how to 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 uh, no, to help them. So if there are alternatives, concrete alternatives, I am willing to listen, and I am listening. Oh, okay. So do not right. say it's difficult because us in government, uh, without being so arrogant or being uh, self-righteous about it, we know... Uh, there are things that we know, facts that we know, and experience that are not known by the common people. Those who criticize, those who, those who uh, make comments. That's why sometimes, unless we, we are able to speak and uh, make known the real score, mm. then then uh, voila, we, we will not agree or we yeah, will just... Uh, yeah, no, no, I think this is... I think this is exactly the purpose of this dialogue right now, Mr. Mayor. That's why I thank you very much for engaging because these yes. are very difficult questions that are being asked of you. But also, I, I, I hope... Yes. Oh, it's not difficult. No, it's <laughs> I stand corrected. But, but I think they were expecting more concrete plans as opposed to just, you know, we will come up with the master plan, we will discuss it later, etc. No, so I, later. that's... That's, you that's are, the problem here. So, putting the uh, cart before the horse. Wala pagaling. Question pagaling ni mong project. How can you proceed? When Dili, you talk kay, about master planning, kaya, you kaya ang consider... Ang pangutana mang God, ang pangutana oh. mang God from the very oh. beginning, na-study, yeah. na na-studyohan ba siya? So, I'm gonna go jump into a question ha, that uh, I have in front of me. This connects, this connects to a dis the discussion we're having now. So, ang pangutana, what efforts have the city government made in order to get a preliminary assessment of the impact of the project from the environmental and socio-economic perspectives for its own understanding and in order to reach the conclusion that this project would be in the best interest of the people of Dumaguete and therefore worth seeking the approval of the relevant national agencies. Okay, you should, you should do this. The only way to know this is we go through the process. You just have to trust the agencies that will require us to, to submit 
or to present all this uh, documentary, those uh, feasibility, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So unless oh. you go to the process, unless you go to the process, you would not know actually because first of all, there are no as of this moment, uh, there are no concrete uh, final uh, uh, detailed engineering plans. We have not yet. So, uh, so I mean, just just to just to narrow uh, down, yes. Mayor, no, kaya yeah, yeah. na ten o'clock. Ang ang pangutan hmm. nara kay na abay preliminary assessment of the impact, so that the city can say na okay, we're gonna pursue this. Uh, what I'm understanding is, wala. It's the process. It's, a, it's, it's the process it's, that will determine it. Sakto ba? Uh, let me correct you. There is uh, an initial uh, feasibility study made. There are cost estimates. There are revenue estimates. It's all in the. It's all submitted by the proponent. Nasa unsolicited proposal. All these are there. All right. So based on the assessment by the selection committee, it is a viable project. But as to the final plans and the actual, uh, the actual, uh, uh, the actual uh, uh, enforcement of these plans, wala pa kay. You have to go through first to have a marine study, that's what I said. Okay, then the, the, the agencies will limit or add, uh, will can limit your your project to, okay, just the just the wastewater treatment facility and a piece of land, uh, 50 hectares or 30 hectares. So it's not the call, it's, it's not our call yet. This is not the final call. Or, or the city of Dumaguete, because these are the agencies that will limit us, that will control us, that will advise us on what to do. So in effect, okay. so wala, ko, nana, it's wala, wala nana. May, So unsa may punto ani mayor na amoy preliminary assessment and sa inyong assessment maayo ang impact sa project. Sa, so, ba? sa selection committee na na na, na, ay, na ay, yes na ay mga revenue uh, stream na uh, projections na initial feasibility study so it's gone the we, we so i-release 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 ba ni nga i-release ba ni mga information kay murag dagkan kay nangutana ganahan pud sila makabalo murag yes, wala mo pud sa dili siya public knowledge the problem ba? the problem is that before the selection committee could present sa council or come up with this now na naman for example uh, wala pagal ni kabalo mo wala pagal itay uh, marine study nag oppose na for example so i i, I don't really mind pero, that because pero, okay ang lang putong, oh. ang dili man kun ki mo balik na pud ani sa procedure ni without dili. you okay those uh, remember those who opposed okay those who already give the written opposition has have not seen these documents or they just they just they just uh, assume that since they are they do not know about these documents the project is bad the project is illegal no 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 i think i think i think the point i think the point i think the point here mr mayor no, mr mayor i yes. think the point no 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 wait 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 let's oh. let's recalibrate no i think oh. the point the point lang the point lang is that oh. these documents should have been public knowledge because uh, there are there are consultations that need to be had prior to your, getting to that stage so that if, in, in, in the that interest of trans no it's in the it's in the ppp code the 2021 no, 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 ppp no. code and there transparent is, transparency is an operative principle there so i think it's not fair to say it's not fair to say that people are not being diligent they want to see because they haven't yeah, so, seen it yeah, yeah so so no, no. I think yeah, I think maybe maybe, maybe maybe to resolve this maybe what uh, we can do na lang to resolve this Mr. Mayor is that since since the the oppositors not I'm assuming are watching right now then maybe you can make a commitment to release these documents so that they can no, have they, a look it will be released in fact it uh, these documents have uh, a huge part of these documents have already been given to the public by a uh, member can, of the selection committee can you can you give a point person that they can write a letter to to ask for copies uh -oh. of these studies Please, and just these wait for the selection documents? Committee. Just wait for the selection committee to present before the council within the week, and all this will be all this will come out. All right. So within all right, the week. So, 
Okay. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Then the problem is, ganito yan eh. Before, uh, you know, before uh, uh, giving the government, before asking questions, that, that, that what we're doing now, you already, there was already a huge opposition, and you know, I don't, maybe, uh, so naunahan na, in other words. That's why the, the, uh, we, we have classified those who are opposing it. Those who are opposing it because they're scared, those who are opposing it because uh, for just, but those uh, opposing it because they just want to oppose it. And regardless of how much you explain to them, it will not matter uh, at all. So mm. these are kinds of opposition. But, but I think, okay, Mr. Mayor, I, I, think, I, think, whether, I, think, yeah. I think maybe for purposes of our discussion, let's just stick to the assumption of good faith, no? because we started on that footing. We started on that footing and let's try to answer more questions with yes, maybe yes, a, yes, little, yes. a little extension na lang kasi it's, it's, uh, it's difficult to impute certain things we do not know. Okay, so uh, yes. there's, a quest there's a question here. Uh, why are the city officials defending EM Cuerpo's proposal instead of the company itself being the no. ones to present themselves? No, by the way, the, under the, our charter, it's the city government was the power to reclaim, okay? It's not within the private entity. Yeah, I, I think the question yes. was why? Why is no, 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 why, no, no, where yes. is he where? Can you please? Can you can you please? Uh, let me continue. No? Mm -hmm. I, I understand your question. When the uh, PPP contract, uh, when when the unsolicited uh, proposal was accepted by the city, because when you uh, present an unsolicited proposal, now may counter proposal to the city, and then a final proposal. It's now it's now a project of the city. It's not just the it's not just the uh, proponent. Besides, um, that's why there's a there's a uh, resolution from the council now to because of this uh, uh, misconception, this fake news, and all to ask questions. Okay, to ask uh, the directly to the proponent to answer all these questions, but. You know, it's really embarrassing because uh, once the documents will be presented, all these questions will be answered. So just, I'm just telling you to, uh, to allay the fears, all these uh, pertinent documents will be shown, okay? But we thought that uh, those who already, the, the, some lawyers have already come out in the, uh, in the Facebook giving all these documents, we thought that they already have copies of the documents, but apparently uh, there is still a confusion with, uh, as to the capability, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Anyway, to cut the story short, it will be this. This with these documents will not be uh, the, the stakeholders will not be deprived of these documents. All right, just thank to, you for to, that. Yeah, I think their, I think we we got yeah. that. Uh, you will be releasing it within this week. Is that no, correct? The selection committee was uh, asked to present the process mm -hmm. with all the documents. All right. right. So, Delina, these documents are already with us. So, we are not defending the Carpio, the Cacuerpo, but we are defending the process. The selection committee was sub, uh, has all these documents and the, the, as basis for the approval of the unsolicited proposal. So we are just saying that we have all these documents. That's why uh, it is just fitting and proper that um, you know the selection committee will present the process and the documents as basis for their decision. That, that's, right. that's why they recommended to me. Ako may last na to. Ako man lang process. I was not part of the process. Uh, ilara na because they are independent. Okay, but they will just recommend to me mune ilang na pasadahan. Right, but so, did, did, did you not did you not um, give the MOU to the city council for their approval? Yes, but that the MOU is not the PPP contract. Yeah, but that I, was part of the process, wasn't it? No, yeah, no, the process. I told you already that the MOU is not the PPP contract. That's why we defer. If you have any question about that, oh, but that sounds that's why, okay. That's why uh, anyway, I. 
Oh. I, I'm sorry, I apologize oh. because you were talking about you saying that you are not part of the process, but then you were the no. one who endorsed the MOU. No, so it I am seems not part like of the selection hitting, process. Selection process. Hairs, okay, okay, no, no, no. Okay. I'm not part of the selection process. Once they, they recommended to me, then I I baton na. It was now my baton to, mm. to the council that before I apply with the PRA, okay, not a MOU, not a PPP contract, just to make sure that the the developer will be the one to pay all these things and to to, to pay all the fees and then to make sure that we have a basis to say to PRA na, look, we are not the ones uh, bankrolling this. Somebody is bankrolling it for us. Then we want a PPA, PPA, uh, PPRA. What's your proof na sila mo bankroll? Nami ikaw, no? Nami MOU. Diba? Nami, that, that, that's, what they, that's how we look at it. All right. I okay. respect there... whatever opposing or uh, uh, contrary views on that. But there are ways of doing that. No? Yeah, I think I think the initial uh -huh. question lang is why is EM Puerpo not the one answering questions uh -huh. on the 174 hectare reclamation? I, I know. As I said, we have a formal inquiry uh, to the Puerpo now to answer these questions. But embarrassingly, I'm embarrassed because these questions are actually found in the, the already in the, in the thick documents that were submitted to the selection committee. I am mm. just sad. Uh, I am disheartened by the fact that before hearing all this, uh, the side of government, I, I can cite you a lot of uh, 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 mis, uh, misconception, misinterpretation, etc. etc. So thank you for this opportunity. You know? uh, I hope people have an open mind until they see all these documents. Not just the documents. First, we are burdened with the environmental issue. And that's for me the most important because if documents are usapan, kung not a legal dispute, we, we, know the, we know the arbiter. It's only the courts. All right? Mm -hmm. But environment, Okay, uh, mayroong DNR ang arbiter. Meron ang PRA ang uh, arbiter. So, uh, we just have to respect the process. If you disagree with the findings, then let DNR decide. Uh, but ako, I want to know personally because I am also, hey, uh, hey, believe me or not, believe you me, I am uh, a, a, an advocate for the protection of the environment. That's why I want to know what type of uh, plants or corals will be affected because I mm. want to avoid them. I yeah. want to avoid there's, them. There's a comment here, nga eh. uh, why not involve the Silliman Marine Laboratory to do the survey? I think you mentioned, right, that you will be working with them. Yeah, it's a big one. It's a big one. I was made to understand mm. that. Well, they can, uh, no, they can, uh, they can uh, observe or participate. They, mm. They're stakeholders, right? Pero ang problema okay. lang, oh, one, yeah. See, we just want to know where these uh, one are, the corals are. Okay, all okay. right. Um, Kuan, I, I uh, question dire. related siguro nito, ano, no, katong claims na fake news, etc. Oh. Uh, ako lang basahon. Uh, another question, Mayor. Why do you insist that the people are making unfounded assumptions through social media when the fact is you denied the stakeholders a public consultation? Would you rather put a stop to this, what you call imagination, by having a multi stake Holder public consultation is that an option, sir? Oh, well, I have been do I'm, I've been doing that. The problem is when I invite, for example, okay, I've invited some sectors. They do not. Uh, they do not know. They refuse. I do that. They refuse or they don't have time to attend. I, mm. I asked for a representative of Siliman University to attend. <laughs> All right, the, but will you? Will, uh, yes, would you? Well, would you be open to doing something in the future, maybe to to, no, to involve I'm everybody? That. I am doing that already. I am doing that okay. already. All right. Okay. So but, there's uh, another. I am also concerned. I'm also, uh, on, I'm also aware, conscious of the fact that there are just people who can no longer be convinced because they have made up their minds. But I am trying hard or doing my best to elucidate or to enlighten those who are still unminded. You know, I, I think for the yeah. general public, uh, for yeah. for those who would like I to assume, know, I assume that majority are still open-minded. 
All right. That's why I'm okay. Doing this Moving on. Uh, there is a comment here. High fecal coliform does not warrant a huge reclamation project. Smart city will not guarantee to solve the unemployment problem. Uh, the need for what waste. Let me finish. I'll finish this now. Uh, uh, the need for wastewater treatment facility would not require a huge 174 hectare reclamation. Uh, what is the compelling reason to have such an excessive and extreme solution to your perceived current and medium-term problems of the city? And Mr. Mayor, before you answer, I, I would just like to assure you that I did hear uh, what you said earlier uh, about how we need contiguous land and a place to properly map out all of these things because uh, this is difficult to navigate in the current Tumagete. But if there's anything you can add to that. Okay. Uh, don't don't, don't uh, uh, confuse this with uh, the wastewater treatment facility. Uh, and wastewater treatment facility is one of the attributes of a smart city. I, I was just mentioning that. Okay. And um, and uh, and all these things that I have already mentioned, it's close to impossible. If it's for me, it's impossible to achieve this. Uh, uh, this uh, to get a, to to land back a contiguous, uh, at least even in fifty hectares, it's almost impossible. Now I am focused on the goal of providing. It is my belief and my strategy to have a uh, sustainable. Uh, solution to the age-old problem of poverty and unemployment in the city and the province. For the longest time, wala pa ko'y concrete na solution ni siya without having to rely on the national government. Okay, Self-help. This is my goal. I, mean, I may be, if you think I'm wrong, then uh, I, the, 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 uh, I, st I still believe no, that many uh, of the uns, what we call it silent majority are there just waiting and listening if we can do it. Okay, uh, we wouldn't know. For example, uh -huh. I, I can even I can even even submit this matter to a plebiscite or rather a referendum. That's, that's good that you. Right? That's good that you mentioned uh, that there is a silent majority. There was a question earlier that was asked. Which groups have um, written statements in support of 174? It, it, can you name groups yeah. that have uh, expressed their support? Yeah, remember, it, it's, it's not as easy as that because this uh, the silent majority they come to us. They don't want to put their uh, uh, their, their, their they reduce their support in the. Uh, in the Facebook or any in writing for fear of being bashed. You know, uh, it's really a fact that these bashers, I'm not saying uh, uh, these bashers, there are bashers who hit people below the belt. All right? This is a reality. If you, no, meaning they do not uh, argue on the level of, you know, uh, objectivity. That an accusation, that imagine saying that the 230 million gibain bahina sa mga konsihal, daghanak ay mga istorya, these are the things that uh, are, are not good for the society. Uh, but about dili na gentle ning, ano, out, or right, ano, right. Course, and I think, I think what we're doing now actually to, to yeah. bring it, bring it out in the open, no, to yes. have some transparency, I think yeah. that's the solution to the speculation yeah. because when, when there no, is no, no. no information, when there's no information available, Mangud, no, I mean, no, is, you, you, that... you, you have to admit, Mr. Mayor, you're saying that this information will be presented pa this week, right? And so no, many things have erupted and no, the public, it the public, it, it, no, no, the public has... It? No, it does not give one a license for lack of information. No, 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 uh, I, I, I agree with you, but, but I think yes. uh, what I'm There's trying to draw to your attention what, what I'm trying to draw your attention to is the purpose of our discussion tonight. We're trying, yes. we're trying yes. to uncover 
all of these things that may give reason for that. It's not justifying that, not at all. And so yeah, I, 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 I hope that this venue that we have actually would be a place where, you know, yeah. some answers were heard, right? Um, uh, so, I, hope, I hope and I would assume that they are made in good faith. But once you hit somebody below the belt, it means that you're running out of good ideas. Pangalawa, it's not well, bordering on bad faith. It's now it's yeah. not bordering on bad faith. Because but I think, uh, the city of gentle people, we, it should not be a license to to, yeah. to, invent, I, to invent, I think that's you know? beside I think that's no, beside, beside the point. The point. It's not beside it, the point. No, no, no. Once I you, mean the no, point no, of, of the having point. good ideas, because if, if, or if anything, Mr. Mayor, oh. the, the questions this evening have been very thoughtful and have oh, been I'm very... I'm not referring to this. No, have let's not have be been very factual. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm just saying that, you know, the questions, they're very thoughtful, they have basis, and so maybe we can just stick to that because, uh, you know, to no, engage no, in I, a discussion I, about pastures, beyond... You. It's beyond the scope of our topic already this evening. No, no, no. I'm just telling you the frustration of a government official who is always the subject of uh, this bashing of... Uh, yeah, but of I this, think... Yeah, uh, you know, yes, I understand. I, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy, it's but not easy. It's, part, it's, it's part of public office. And I hope that you will also no. understand. I hope you will also understand no, that there is also a frustration on the side of the public oh, and that, no, that's what that's that's what we're seeing now so i oh. hope let's let's give it the benefit of the doubt mr mayor because you said you know we'll assume that there's good faith let's look at it from that perspective and what okay, we're doing okay. now is we're trying to sort of you know Are lay you the facts. About that? Or if you're serious yeah. then i will give you the benefit of doubt okay yeah so, of course you, know, you were asking me about are there groups okay if mm. i can show you uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, endorsements or support from the barangays. Will you be contented with that? Uh, who and these elected officials are a bit elected with the people? Are, will you be contented with that? All right. Uh, it's not. It's see, not me. You can present no, it no, to no, the no, public, no, but I think. No. I think, no, no, no. I, think you, I think for for purposes yes. of for of father no food for thought yes. I yes. think uh, it might be nice to hear from fellow constituents because if you say yes. Yes. Barangay, and this is just me this is just oh. me huh? my my uh -huh. personal uh, okay. opinion okay. Huh? when you okay. say that you know will you be satisfied with that with the barangay it's good to That's present yes. yes but but uh, I think that there might be a question raised na well you know that's the barangay they'll get support from the mayor. So oh, no, no, maybe, no, no, no. So you no, no, no. I'm, I'm just you saying. Because, I'm just saying that's no, a possible. No, no, no. That's a possible yes. question that will be raised. Yeah, so that's why be... I'm going back. That's why I'm going back to oh, maybe no, no. are there other okay, proponents, I'll tell you, I mean, I'll tell you. supporters I'll tell you. that you can name. No, no, okay. I'll tell you supporters. Okay. Do you think? Uh, I mean, in two days, I received a lot of, you know, the signatures. I have not even validated that. If uh, for, for, for for I know that a number of those who are opposing are are outside the jurisdiction of the Philippines, alumni association based in the U.S., etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, from the school. I am not. I am not uh, uh, downgrading or you know their concern. But I am also mayor of, you know, the officials, they were crying. They were really, they are the frontliners. They see the squalor, the, 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 uh, they, are the they are the first line of defense. They're the first people that uh, the poor people or those who are in need, those who are hospitalized, they go to them. If they cannot, uh, uh, if they cannot satisfy them, they go to the mayor or even to the congressman. So these are realities that we see every day. So th 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 that's why it it's difficult. It's, it's different when one uh, uh, Founders Day enjoy two weeks in Dumaguete. They think the boulevard is Dumaguete, right? Well, uh, it's different. I live the congressman, I think, myself. I think that that, that well, might be, uh, uh, maybe, maybe you know, to, to just move the discussion forward, yeah, Mr. Mayor. So that that might be an unfair, that might be an unfair statement to make because most of the people who are talking and asking these questions are residents, not visitors. 
not I visitors of Dumaguete. So maybe we can move yeah, on. Okay. Maybe we can yeah. move on from that because I don't think it's okay. a pro productive discussion. Um, no, maybe saying... to, to wrap up to wrap up this uh, this okay. evening. There's a there's oh. a question here. There's a question here um, that says. If, for example, this project won't push through, what is your alternative proposal to generate jobs for the people of Dumaguete? Will you be inviting investors to buy land from Dumaguete locals instead so that the government won't have to shell out extra funds? Uh, the investors from buying land in Dumaguete, then to do what? To do their private business? Yeah, maybe put up BPOs that can generate 3,000 plus jobs or something of that sort. Uh, I think the question is just asking if there are alternative plans if the project doesn't get approved. If the project doesn't get approved, there's a, mm -hmm. uh, there's a you know, um, uh, you cannot get the desired number of uh, or quality investors because we don't have uh, the, the a place which is a desirable place, which is master plan, uh, which has uh, which is available, okay, uh, which is contiguous, which is uh, well planned, and naanay mga facilities to attract the quality investors. All right. So Sakaron, we will be depending upon private individuals who own lands scattered, okay? okay. So it's really difficult. This is a city uh, project. Uh, it's a city um, um, plan. And uh, the city directs, meaning it's controlled by the, it's within the control of the city, not within the control of private individuals. It's difficult. I'm telling you, Mag as a private uh, citizen, well, you cannot. Uh, uh, it's impossible to get all these uh, these investors together and make it an attractive uh, offer, an attractive uh, place to invest in. Unless you have, and I'm telling so, you, uh, you, may, you, may, you may disagree. You may disagree, but uh, that is precisely the reason why we have reclamations in, or you know. Uh, in Metro Manila now, four uh, big ones, uh, five big ones approved by the PRA. I can name your names. No? So Navotas, 576 hectares. Horizon Manila, 419. Manila Waterfront, 318. Pasay Development, 265. And Manila Solar City, 143. Mas dako pag kanang sa Cebu, Cordoba, 1,500. Because Pili na nila master plan kasi the, the old way of doing things, wala na. Uh, Hudspuds na ang development. It's difficult now to rearrange, okay, and uh, destroy a lot of you know, people and a lot of properties or uh, on them, you, uh, you uh, rearrange them uh, and the attitude of, plus the attitude of people. This should na kayo. That's why these this, uh, developments are sprouting. Uh, to, to really attract investors. We have, we have to be globally competitive. Now, if not, maybe we can just uh, send our graduates to Cebu nearby. Muna effect. We are, the, we are trying to, uh, to prevent a, the OFWs or families from being uh, uh, split up, broken families because of distance, because they have to work outside. Uh, Dumaguete City or Negros Oriental. So, yun lang naman eh. So, uh, it's, I said, easier said than done. Okay? So, so you're, you're saying that, uh, no, I mean, I just wanted to clarify, you think that uh, reclamation projects in Manila and Cebu uh, are equivalent or comparable to what Dumaguete is going to do or intends to do. Is that what no, you're saying? I'm saying that these are precisely sprouting because of the need to, to attract these investors, to improve the quality of life, all right? To make a master plan that it's going to be uh, palatable to these investors. We are competing with them. Cebu is the nearest, Napoy Bacolod, Napoy Iloilo. We are competing, okay? So kung dili na ito mahimuning ato, 
and then I 1,500 sa Cebu, I, my God knows the environmental impact of 1,500 hectares of reclamation. Okay, I hope this will not be approved by the DNR because of the, even considering the magnitude of the project. Unsaban? Uh, what, what will the DNR or PRA say? So, one uh, uh, But I think, siguro, uh, kwan lang, considering. I, I, understand, I understand what you're trying to say. What you're trying to say is that uh, no, to be competitive, to invite investors to come in mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to be able to have the ability for these investors to create jobs, the 174 reclamation is necessary. And in fact, such projects are being done in other parts of the country. That's what bigger, you're saying, right? Bigger projects. Bigger, bigger projects, right. I think maybe just to, environmental impact. I, I think the, the note that I want to add lang siguro is that um, the question, there was a question kasi na, ano, kanang, is it comparable? And you're saying it's bigger, but I think maybe what, what the, 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 the attendee is driving at is um, the impact on the ecosystem in those areas and so we're not scientists we won't be able to def definitively say but i think the the uproar in Dumaguete is that there are four marine protected areas along the stretch of the coastline that you know, is subject for reclamation even as a lay person i can say already with all uh, i mean with all uh, belief and honesty navotas is a ship is a fishing fishing uh, uh, area mm, of part of Metro Manila. And uh, 576 hectares is in Navotas. And I cannot believe how they will, how they have justified that with PRA and DNR. So that's right. what I'm saying. But I'm okay. just saying as, an, as a lay person, just by the magnitude, I am assuming that the magnitude, there's also a magnitude of uh, effect on the environment. Kung dili nila iwasan na, kung dili sila mo integrate, dako silang problema, dako silang gastos. But ako, sa Dumaguete, we have to find out, I will have to repeat, we first survey the ecosystem of Dumaguete and really find out for ourselves and for those who are opposing it, kung how does it look like? Can we have a compromise here? Can it be mitigated? Can it be mm. integrated? Mm. Then, then we will decide. Diba? All right. We will decide. No. Well, that's okay. as simple as that. So, Mr. Mayor, Moragni, overtime ta, maybe 30 minutes. Um, before um, we end tonight, would you like to um, have, you know, maybe your last words to the listening public? Okay. Uh, I hope that uh, people, the majority will have an open mind on this. This is not a done deal. All right? I have not signed anything. I have not yet applied. All right? There will be a uh, marine survey. Uh, uh, supposedly within this week or for the next two weeks or three weeks, I will be, as soon as I get the final uh, uh, word or date of the arrival of the participants of the survey, then I will inform uh, the public about this so they can observe. Also, para ilong wala ni magic. All right? The, those who oppose can do also their own survey. And the DNR actually is the final arbiter of this. There will be people from DNR. I will invite the people from DNR. Para makita nila. Then, the next step is, I will require, okay? I will demand from the proponent to integrate or avoid any damage to the environment. If they cannot do it, there's no deal. All right? All right. So, ako lang, the public should be, you know, uh, have an open mind. Forget all this bashing and forget all this, you know, that do not really matter uh, in, in terms, they, they, they don't uh, have any bearing on uh, on the process, okay? The process is long. Moagi Paganas PRA, Philippine Reclamation Authority, which is being advised by the NEDA and uh, the Department of Finance, the DNR, uh, whether mo issue silang ECC or not. Or perhaps let's create a movement to abolish PRA and DNR para wala nang ECC, wala nang reclamation. PRA is Philippine Reclamation Authority. Abolish that kung ayaw natin, di ba? 
there's a big howl here. I mean, let's be consistent also. Uh, well, I am, well, this is off corner, diba? Uh, this would be another discussion if I say what happens to the, what are we doing with the, uh, the uh, existence of several quarries here in Negros Oriental. Is there any howl? Yeah, the reclamation projects of DOTR and the DPWH. Is there any howl for a demand for ECC? It's not because these are government, the legitimate government projects. So um, I am for the people. I am for the environment. But I want to find out. I want to be guided intelligibly on what to decide henceforth by empirical evidence. Okay. Makita gyud na to. Then I will tell the poor people na nga murag dili feasible kay daghan ka mga igo akoras unya dili mabalhin. Kung mabalhin, yes. Kung ba propagate, yes. Kung ma-integrate, yes. Pero I will not even uh, use the formula used by uh, former DNR secretary in 1995 and under secretary for replacement of uh, destroyed corals and mangroves and trees. Replacement uh, of the same quantity. I will not even go to that uh, extent because maybe at that time, dili pa man high-tech ang atong hindi pa kayo advance ang atong science. But with the advancement of science, it can already be done. Uh, you know, a, a balance between uh, the preservation of the environment and also attend to the needs of our economy. So, ganun lang. So, I hope mawala na ning, uh, Kwan, uh, you hear it from us directly because, in fact, uh, I don't know if it's misgivings, but I understand those who were opposing the project were already uh, uh, already spoke before this program before you're before I did, diba? In fact, I, I have misgivings because kanang atong 1.9 expansion uh, hectares lang, expansion of the uh, Pantawan tree, they, they were, the Catholic Church was already sponsored a, a public forum, which I was not even invited to speak. And they already concluded. And that's, that's the misgivings I have. I was promised that I would have a, uh, the government side will be heard. We just want to be heard. Right. And I hope, and I hope, I hope Mr. Mayor, tonight, yeah. you, okay. I hope tonight you felt that the government side was uh, adequately aired and heard. And, oh, with uh, your I, incisive questions, yes. <laughs> yes. I, I'm also just trying to get a little bit of clarity. I hope you don't yes, mind. Okay. No, no, I don't mind. The, the, you know, the more incisive, the better for me. Again, please be reminded that this video does not reflect on any opinions from the DC team and is only published for information purposes. Thank you for watching. If you found this video informative, please leave a comment in the section below. Subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell so you won't miss any of our upcoming videos.